welcome to another edition of the Carton Show. We got my main man, David Jacoby, right yeah, there. We got sure. three-time Super Bowl champion, two different teams, by the way. Oh, yeah. Mark Schlereth right there. Schlereth. And one time, sorry. It's all right. Only one time. Great Super job, Bowl man. champion, main man, uh, Willie Clone, Steelers and Jets. I just want to acknowledge my outfit today because I'm thrilled. I'm a big minor league baseball guy. Huge. And there's a team in New Jersey, the Somerset Patriots, that have rebranded themselves as the New Jersey Diners. And I'm their mascot. Oh, so, oh gotcha. Just in case this gig doesn't work out, and I've been told it's 50-50, uh, I have a job waiting for me in New Jersey. I am now the mascot of the New Jersey Diners, which has to be Attaboy. the hottest and freshest new minor league team name and concept in all of America, no? Minor league, minor league teams are awesome. Yes. They are like the, <laughs> the mascots, the way they all go about, the way they operate. That is a great, that's a great yeah. mascot. I, I mean, just need a hat that fits a little better, but that's. <laughs> what, are, what are you serving? <laughs> what happened? What are you serving? I serve the Happy Waitress, oh, gotcha. which is open face grilled cheese with tomato. Oh, there you go. That's the most famous diner order, oh. of course, of all time. You know, it's funny. You guys may not know this, but I'm a voracious reader. Mm. I like to read a lot, no, all right? And uh, I found not only a new book I recommend for everybody, but I actually have a new favorite coach in the NFL. Now, I know a lot of you say, no, you're Robert Sala's boy. And, yeah, Sala and I are good friends, mm. and uh, he's in some hot water right now, which we'll get to a little bit, ah, a little bit, a little bit later on in the show. The Jets' dysfunction continues. But this Dave Canales, who's the new head coach oh, of the Carolina you Panthers. Book? Yeah. You read his book? Read the book. Read the book. You may not know this, but Dave Canales wrote a book. The name of the book is This Marriage, question mark. The question that changed everything. It is a fast read, my friends, and I highly recommend it. And I've got some rooting interest now in the Carolina Panthers. Why is he my favorite head coach? Sure. My man came out and acknowledged that he had an addiction to pornography. Oh, man. That he cheated on his wife as often as he possibly could. Okay. And he also, unfortunately, had a, a, a bad run with alcohol. Mm. And he wrote a book about it. Seems like they go together. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of that stuff right. does go together. Yeah. But the fact that this guy could overcome alcoholism, on addiction to pornography, side pieces all over the globe, and become a head coach of the NFL, either says he's the greatest interviewee in the history <laughs> of professional sports, or Carolina maintains its position as the dumbest team in all of the NFL. Mark Schlert, they ask you which you think is right. Uh, I think he is a great interview. He's a great, I'm telling you, he is a great dude. You want to talk about energy. You want to talk about a guy that has, he's, I mean. He clearly has a lot of energy. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, clearly. Because clearly. you're married, you no, got but kids, I, you got telling, side stuff, yeah. you got the drinking, you well, got pornography, I, I, you got cool. Japanese anime, <laughs> you got dressing up like a furry, you got <laughs> lots of stuff. Mark. Wait, there's a t there was a ton of stuff there. It's not that way anymore. Which but is I'm nice. Telling you, I'm telling you, great dude. Like, a great dude. And I really, as a coach, I really like him. You think like, he'll I, be a I've good sat, head coach? Well, I've sat down with him. Here's what I love about him more than anything else. The dude is complete humility. Like, I respect he will, that. He will, yeah. he will tell you his junk, right? Yep. Like he did in this book. Yep. He'll let you know about it. But he will, like, when I sat with him, we, we sat and talked about the running game forever and just, like, total pick my brain. So, at, let me ask you this. I mean, this guy's coaching – an NFL team goes, yeah. I want to ask you some questions about this, this, So he's this, like a sponge he wants to learn. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, I mean, the guy is, like, there's a lot of coaches, and you know how this works, yeah. right? A lot of coaches that know everything. I, I like you. I like the guys who understand that, hey, man, I don't know everything, yeah. so let me Let me, let me ask you guys just one quick question. Jacoby, not from a sports standpoint, but you've been around in this business a long time. Would you guys rather play for, like, the stick-up-his-ass kind of coach like you're talking about who knows everything mm -hmm. uh, or a coach that, you know, is unapproachable or a coach that goes, look, I know exactly what you guys are doing. I've done it. I drank too much. I caroused too much. Yeah. I've had women all over the place. I cheated on my wife. I own it. I've overcome all of it. I'm blessed that my wife is still in my life. I found religion, whatever it is. Would you rather play for that guy or the guy that's more like you're know, the Bill Belichick type who wins, but you're never going to have a beer with the guy? Uh, I, I think for me, I, I think it's the Belichick type. because I think, Really? Yeah, because at the end of the day, I, I, 
I know the other side of the fence, right? I don't need that. You. You know, like, I, I want to win. I'm here to win. Right? Yeah. We win, I get paid. It's a better locker room. So I don't, I don't need the other side. I, I, just, I just look at it. I think the most important thing when it comes to coaching, and this is just not only years of playing, but years of covering this game and being in locker rooms and talking to coaches, authenticity. Yes. If you are who you are, whether you've got crap or whether you don't have, like whatever the case may be, if you are real, then guys will follow you. Guys so will you be think like, Canales will have, whether, whether he wins or loses, right. the guys will like playing for him. They'll be I don't, think, I don't think there's any question. I, yeah. well, I want to tell you this. I'm a Jet fan through it. You guys will know that. But I now have a little bit, a little teeny part of me, a little teeny part of me. I want this guy to be successful because I want to hear more. That's <laughs> it. I want to hear more. I want to hear all the sordid stories. I do appreciate overcoming addiction. Uh, I've done the same thing, so I have respect for that. And when you wear it on your sleeve and you own it, there's nothing better than a dude or a gal in recovery that owns it and drops mm-hmm. the shame associated with it. But I really want to hear more about the girls, to be honest with you. <laughs> and what kind of pornography were you addicted to? How does he to? have the time if he was a coach? I'll explain to you later on. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> we got a great show for you today. Uh, we'll get right into all your headlines. We do have a lot of Jets dysfunction. And more importantly, we are now just nine days away from Super Bowl 58. Does Kansas City know how to, per- to flip the proverbial switch And is that what they did in December to make this great run? Right after this. All right, time for headlines as we get cracking here on a Thursday morning. That looks like Kansas City scored a touchdown. Yeah, there it is. Uh, Travis Kelsey, Patty Mahomes, of course. That's the AFC Championship game right there. Travis Kelsey said in an interview on his own podcast yesterday that there is some truth to the notion that they were kind of sleepwalking a little bit, been there, done that. I didn't flip that switch until December, and that's why we're seeing better football out of Kansas City. I find it hard to buy that because I saw the frustration on the sideline week after week. We saw that offense only score, you know, 17, 18 points a game for a long time. But I appreciate what he's saying that they never really panicked. They won the division. That wasn't up for grabs. And they knew we're good enough to win on the road. We can win at home. And now that we're in December and January, we know exactly what it takes to win. You uh, put any credence into that? Well, I know Spags had talked openly about when they lost to the Raiders at home in that second half where the Raiders pretty much didn't throw the ball. They just ran the ball down right, their throats right. and walked them out of their own building. Um, he, he, Spags said, you know, it wasn't him going to those guys and saying, hey, we got to do better. It was guys collectively saying, hey, this is not who we are. This is not what we built. So it was more of a players-only thing. They really kind of rallied around that. But overall, man, like, these guys have been there done that. Right? So they know, they know the map. Now, now was able to let me ask you this, Mark, because I, I was in Denver doing talk radio and one of your championship runs. Mm. And if I have the facts wrong, please stop me. But my memory, I think, of the 98 season was you guys are undefeated, 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 lost back-to-back games at the end of the season. And then the big question was, "Uh uh-oh, what's wrong with Denver? Do you remember a moment where you guys, after back-to-back losses, I think you were 13-0 at one spot in that year, uh, were like, "Uh uh-oh, what's wrong Hey, it's the playoffs. We know how to flip the switch and get right back to the type of football. No, I mean, I think you have a lot of confidence in what you've done, what you've done in the past, who you are, the way you've played. Um, you know, once we lost the first game, uh, Coach sabotaged us in the second game. Meaning what? Because it was the you well, lost we were, to the we, Giants. We, 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 lost to, we lost to the Giants. Right. And then we went on the road to play Miami, okay. which I call a gold bond game in Miami because, right, you got to put a lot of powder on your garbles. So, like, you got to, like, that, there's now, no more it's miserable. Called, it's called chafing. Right. Yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. more miserable place. You ever play 36 place. holes of golf in one day? Right. That's what he's talking about. There's the most miserable place to play in December is not Green Bay, it's, it's Miami. Miami. By far. Really? It's by miserable, far. right? When you're fat and you're out of shape yeah. and you're sucking eggs and you're not used to, like, you're yeah. not used to the heat anymore. And it's 30 degrees. You come from up north. It's 30, 40 degrees. Right. In Miami, it's, it's 90 Miami degrees. Miami is miserable. And you, you listen to South. I'm finding this so hard to believe. Right. Miserable. No, I hate it. You oh, hate it. Oh, hate it. Anyhow, so we're playing, <laughs> we're playing Miami. Yeah. And we know that the possibility is that we're going to face Miami in the playoffs. Okay. So we ended up, we ended up literally going in with 
two or three runs, and we ran one protection. We ran three jet, which was a turn strong to the right-hand side. So myself and Tony Jones were one-on-one -on -one the entire game. Oh, that's brutal. It's, it was brutal. brutal. It was a br and we did nothing. Z we showed them zero. <laughs> and they beat, they beat our ass, and they were, like, celebrating like they won something, you know? <laughs> and then they came to Denver in the playoffs. We beat them 38-3. to three. I mean, just smack down. Shot and set them up, huh? Yeah. Oh, but complete and total. Got it. Sabaton. That's a different kind of scenario. Yeah. Look, I appreciate what but, you Travis. know. You like yeah. Travis. They, they, there's some truth, and I hate to flip the switch mentality. Yeah. But there's some truth. We've done it. We've been there. They We're that we good. And we got Pat Mahomes. Yeah, and I should also mention that, that Mark knows this. Mark played with a guy named Bill Romanowski, and Bill Romanowski had equity in a company called Flip the Switch. It was a, yes. a sports apparel brand in Denver because they thought they knew how to boop, flip the switch. Oh, wow. So, look, Kelsey had a great game. Kansas City knows how to win. Uh, but now you're in the Super Bowl. There's no more switch uh, to be flipped. Uh, number two, there's a damning article um, uh, online about the New York Jets this past Shocking. season. Uh, talking about the level of dysfunction inside that locker room. I mean, you've got some unhappy dudes who are no longer Jets, whether they be on the coaching staff and or players who are now spilling the beans. Uh, to me, this is an article that never needed to be written. They talk about the coach being paranoid and uh, trying to figure out ways of making himself look better. As you see right there, it's just an effing mess. Something needs to change. An AFC general manager said Aaron Rodgers is the general manager of that team. Well, we've known that the whole year. Yep. And Hackett never changed the offense to accommodate for a different skill set of Zach Wilson uh, as opposed to Aaron Rodgers, who of course, got hurt on the fourth play. Here's my problem with the article. We knew all this stuff already. Right. Right. Like, we talked about it every week for four months, right? And if you want to talk about the dysfunction of the Jets, I'm your Huckleberry. I'll do it all day, every day. The Jets season ended when Aaron Rodgers got hurt, period, stop. And we can make all the you know, arguments you want about Robert Sal's not a winning coach. He hasn't been. Joe Douglas is not a winning general manager. He hasn't been. You can't tell the Jets story without starting and ending with the fourth play of the season yeah. when Aaron Rodgers got hurt, period, stop. Yeah, you're right. I mean, everything that was talked about in that, that little article, we've already known. The problem is that right now moving forward, it seems they're, it, unless they go out and get a guy in case Aaron Rodgers gets hurt, you know, we're not going to be satisfied that this, you know, this organization is moving in the right direction. But I think this function, that's just riddled around the Jets, man. There's nothing that was said in there that we personally didn't know. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Robert Sala made a list of every coach like, in the history of football that I lost the starting quarterback and showed what their record was after losing the starting quarterback. And obviously the records aren't very good. Right. And he was showing that to make a point of, it ain't my fault. My defense is badass. We're a top five defense. What do you expect me to do? My general manager didn't get me a legitimate viable backup quarterback. That's not on me. So much more on that coming up. But what would be the NFL without another offseason of Jets dysfunction? You said it's a damning article. Yeah. No, it's not a damning article. <laughs> it's just an article because that's exactly what it is. That's who the Jets are. It's the most Jetty thing ever. Yeah. Jetty. It's a yeah, Jetty. It's a jetty oh, you thing. love it. You love that. Jetty. Mark loves poking New York sports <laughs> fans, man. Typically Giants fans. But he loves the pokey, pokey, pokey. Uh, Michael Parsons spoke. Uh, he recognized that he's not the best player in the league, I guess. But uh, he heard Jerry Jones' comments about being all in, as we discussed earlier this week. And Micah came out and said, I hope so, because we didn't do it last year, meaning the Dallas Cowboys did not acquire more talent, talent that he thought they should go after. But I'm thinking about saying, man, when you beat the Giants 40 to nothing, yeah. when you blew out the Patriots, you when you beat the Carolina Panthers, when you had uh, home field advantage up to the NFC Championship mm -hmm. game, seemed like you had enough talent to win what happened, Micah? Well, on top of that, you got to stay within your pay grade, right? Like, you're not you're not the owner. You don't tell the owner what to do. You allow right. him to do what he does. At the end of the day. How about you get a couple sacks in the big game? But I was going to say that. that. How about you pop up the tape? How we don't have a tape against you against the 49ers, you getting body slammed by USEC, right? Like, there's there's tape out there where you're not the guy. Yeah. So, stay within your pay grade. So, Micah Parsons, uh, not afraid of a microphone at all, but uh, apparently afraid of top sacking the quarterback. one of the, the top five talented team in the National Football right. League, bar none. It's, you yeah. got, talent is not your issue. I agree. I agree. That Quarterback is not your players. issue. That's obvious. You all know that. All right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brand new segment here uh, that Jacoby's going to take over. Although something we like to call small story. Big, Big deal. deal. Take it away. Okay. So the Jets 
did not wish what? Robert Sala a happy birthday yesterday. Oh. That's a small story. However, big, big, big deal. deal. Okay. Big deal. Yeah. For the last 12 years in a row, the Jets social media accounts has wished their head coach a happy birthday. And just all of a sudden, they didn't uh-huh. do it this year. Yeah. Does that tell you that Robert Sala is out as a head coach? Well, I know, <laughs> I know, I know that there are, there are, there's blood in the water. Right. I know there's some talk <laughs> out there that the Jets are actually looking at some uh, Titans uh, assistant coaches to bring it to the fold, oh. and that there's some interest maybe in a guy named Mike Vrabel. Yeah. Guy. Slow your roll out there. Mike Vrabel's never won a damn thing. But they didn't say happy what? birthday. What? But here's the craziest thing about the Jets. Because like you said, last year they wished him a happy birthday. Yep. The year before that, they wished him a happy birthday. The 10 years before that, they wished whoever the coach was a happy they birthday. They knew it was his birthday yesterday. But I have to give the Jets a pass to this one for one reason. They wished me a happy oh, birthday. There you go. And maybe they got confused. Are you the head coach of the Jets? Yeah. Because we look very similar. Well, well, and well, maybe they just got, got confused. confused. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, handsome bald guy is on to you. That must be our coach. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. So, that's so you I guys do. share a birthday. We do share now a birthday. Here's the Ten deal. years apart. Like yeah. 12 years in a row, they've been absolute dreck wishing their coach a happy birthday. Good point. Oh, good maybe spin. Maybe this is a. Good maybe, spin. Right. Maybe this is a, hey, we're going to try doing something new. Different. Yeah. <laughs> not. Yeah. But not I, wish yeah, our guy As Willie really knows, as you guys know, I'm, I know the Jets very well. I'm very close to the New York Jets. I know what happened or is going to happen in about an hour and 40 minutes when the 23-year-old social media director for the New York Jets comes to work. Pack your bags, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye. Because yeah. now you've created... Although it's nonsense, you've created a narrative Uh. that the New York Jets hate Robert Sala, (laughs) right? So that kid, unfortunately, is getting fired. Today. It's not even that hard. It's on your Google calendar. It just pops it's right up. there. Yeah. 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 I got 1,472 people on LinkedIn wishing me a happy birthday. <laughs> I don't know who any of them are. So you're right. Just put it in the phone Let's and just put it do in. it right. Dumb. Okay, next. The Chiefs pass catchers mm-hmm. have only dropped one pass in the last two games. Small story. Big deal. deal. In the previous 18 games, they had 48 drops is the key to them winning the Super Bowl simply their pass catchers catching passes I'd say it's part of it a hundred percent and you saw it on third and nine game on the line yes, sir. and they throw the ball deep down the middle of the field zero coverage and uh, MVS makes the greatest catch of the year for him falling down backwards stumbling like me at Yankee Stadium except he held on to the <laughs> ball and sealed the game if they make catches like that if they don't miss any of the routine opportunities, routine opportunities to make catches, it is a big, big deal. Yeah, it's a huge deal. Yeah. It's a, it, the other thing is, is go back to go back to the last time they matched up in the Super Bowl, or, or the Kansas City was in the Super Bowl against yeah. Tampa. I mean, yeah. not against San Francisco, but against Tampa. Remember, Tampa was basically they're they're playing their linebackers at about seven yards depth. They were going, please run it against us, please run. And Andy Reid was like, no, I'm going to win the way I want to win. Right. We're throwing the yeah. football. And they end up losing that. Yeah. What have they done the last couple of weeks? Isaiah Pacheco I've been has saying been, it a week. Right, yeah. he, has been, a he has been the offense. Yeah. Man. He has been the guy they've run the offense through. Right. That's, a, that's smart coaching. Remember this, opinion. though. Not a prolific offense, a smart offense. Right. And I think that's the difference between Kansas City uh, during this dynasty run and Kansas City this year. They're not scoring 30. But they're smart now in how they run their offense Mm -hmm. as opposed to a run being a dump-off pass, which they count as a run. Now they're handing the ball off. I like Pacheco do his thing. Yeah, so I, it is a big difference. And Kelsey's been catching a lot more. You talk about MVS and in crucial situations. Like, the trust is back. Yeah. That's the thing. They're yeah. able to trust the receivers that are making plays. You know, you're a very handsome man. You know, very handsome. You, enough. you look great today. Thank you for everybody. Really, out you look there. great today, buddy. Well, you know, I showered. That's that helps. Starts oh, with a shower. Yeah, it starts with a shower. <laughs> All, right, boy. All right, listen, we got much more coming your way. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, now that Michael Parsons said, I hope you do the right thing this offseason, and it's all in to win. Does that mean Dak Prescott gets a new contract? We'll get into that right after this. 
Uh, welcome back to the Carton Show. You know, one of the great things about college basketball uh, is the way you have the uh, the kids at the game, the crowd, always great, especially if you have a top 25 team. And then when a dude goes to the free throw line and the kids try to find creative ways to distract a fellow you know, teenager, a kid in his mm-hmm. 20s at the free throw line, well, I got to hand it to the kids at Ole Miss. One particular kid came up with the greatest distraction of a dude at the free throw line. I'll let you see the video yourself. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That's, uh, that's right. That's pretty graphic. Dude. The balloon penis distraction yeah. is the new thing right. that's invading college campuses now, Mark Schlereth. Uh, and the, the kid bricked both free throws. I mean, the guy so, next to him is So really you know it works. Too. Yeah. Now, there's <laughs> other videos of this kid that I can't show on TV, but the balloon wound up standing upright. Oh, and I'll man. Just, I'll leave it on really? at that. Well, but the, the dude bricked both free throws. I would flinch too if I saw that like that. <laughs> I was at the uh, Nets game last night and the guy whammy and the guy. Oh, with the Mr. Fans, whammy! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that would throw me off. Like, I gotta understand why LeBron sued him. Like it's it's distracting. <laughs> like it's a lot. You used to be guy kids were taking like full uh, on like yo know, uh, posters of attractive girls, yeah. that kind of thing. Then we've seen some where the cheerleaders you know, do a booty shake uh-huh. at the baseline. But the balloon penis yeah. is that not the greatest I, I like distraction? The, I like the birth one. You know where they do the the. The, oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, you see them uh, do the birth thing? I've never seen that yeah, one. It's oh, a, yeah, it happened a couple of years ago. They like, yeah, you know, you see birth. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I uh, yeah, 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 work yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Where is that? Where is that? How does birthing a human yeah. work? Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go through the whole graph here. <laughs> I think it might be time for first in football. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that we're doing first in football. <laughs> and you know the Dallas Cowboys are in first in football because Micah loves the microphone. We'll get well, that we in a second. We'll start with the Seahawks. They have hired Ravens defensive coordinator Mike yes, McDonald sir. as their head coach. What do you think of the hire, Craig? Uh, what I love is what Mike McDonald said when he first got hired, and that is, I'm bringing the balloon penis to Baltimore. Oh. Which, oh. Uh, no, he didn't. Was well, that his opening statement? Yeah. 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 That is yeah. his yeah. opening line? Look, Seattle. this is the way uh, we've seen it. It always happens. You know, if you're a coordinator on a team that has great success, you get poached. Yeah. And no one's going to you know, argue that Mike McDonald, who uh, had a great year in Michigan, had obviously a great year in Baltimore as a young stud defensive coordinator, you know, they also have great talent there. You guys can speak more to the talent in Seattle versus Baltimore than I can, of course. But this is what happens when you're associated with success, and this is the way it should happen. You know, earn your spot. You know, you're here, you're there, you're here, you're there. Become a coordinator, dominate, and get hired as a head coach. But I view this story more as who didn't get the job than I do Mike McDonald getting the job. And congrats to Mike, great coordinator. We'll see if he becomes a great head coach. To me, this is more of the Dan Quinn story. Dan Quinn Ah. was a finalist for the Seattle job. There are no other jobs for him to get. So now if you're the Dallas Cowboys, and you know he wanted a head coaching job, and the defense really showed in a bad way against the Green Bay Packers in the playoff game, are you running it back with Dan Quinn as your defensive coordinator? Yeah, I don't see it that way. I, I see it because I think he got the job because of his resume. You got to understand, he'd be all for NFC, NFC West team. Great. Take McDonald out of it. What do the Cowboys do with Dan Quinn? You bring him back because they said they do wanted you? him back. Why not? Like what? what because Green Bay embarrassed you. That's why. Like the, the, the last taste I have in my mouth as a Dallas Cowboy fan, among other tastes, are my defense didn't show up. Period. Stop. Why am I bringing Dan Quinn back? My defense didn't get the job done. Right? But, but yeah, but Jerry Jones doesn't fire anybody. So, I mean, like, what are you, you going to do? Plus, there is still the Washington job, right? And Dan mm-hmm. Quinn has interviewed a couple of times for the Washington job. So that's still on the table. I, you know, I look at Seattle, and it just is endemic of the National Football League in general, is they think because you're young that you can communicate. That's the dumbest thing I have <laughs> yeah. ever. Just because you're a young dude, you can throw some emojis on your text. Doesn't mean that you can communicate with with right. players. Right. Like guys, like there's nobody that's better communicated with his players than Wade Phillips, and he's a hundred. So sure. Wade is awesome. Wade is great. Yeah. yeah. So you know, the, you just have to understand what the guy is. The other thing about Seattle is when they were winning championships, we could sit there and talk about Russell Wilson. We could sit there and talk about their offense, beast mode, but it was that defense that was generational at the yeah, time. Yeah, leads to the bull. And, and, that's, and they have lost that Clint Hurt. We saw him get fired. He went on to be a D-line coach somewhere else. So they have struggled the last few yeah. years, 
even though they're a talented team, they've struggled. Yeah, but I'll tell you, I know we got to move on to another topic. I love the hiring of McDonald because I'm one of these guys, I hate the same old, same old. Like guys that get their second chance, their third chance, their fourth chance, their fifth chance. I love the new blood sure. that's being injected into the NFL. Young guys in their mid to late 30s. Most of them are former players, which I think is a great way to go. Mm. But I love the fact that we're not bringing out all the old heads again. Let's hire Norv Turner again. You know, let's <laughs> hire Dan Quinn again. I love the move. So I like it, and that's that. Moving on to second <laughs> and football. We knew this was coming with the Bengals. T. Higgins has a decision to be made there. And a Cincinnati Bengals executive, Duke Tobin, spoke about the team retaining Higgins. And here's where he said, quote, I want T. Higgins back. Yeah. Everyone on our team would like T. Higgins back. There's a pie. Mm. And there ah. are things we can do and can't do because of it. We'll see. Does that make you feel like we've seen the last of T. Higgins in a Bengals uniform? Yeah, because yeah. he's an unrestricted free agent. So there's going to be 10 teams bidding for the services of T. Higgins. And I think the Bengals made a calculated mistake. You know, as, as Mark said yesterday, the salary cap in the NFL is quote-unquote fungible, which means you can make it work if you want to make it work. Mm -hmm. And remember the notion back four months ago, before Joe Burrow got the big contract extension, Joe Burrow said, I'm willing to take less to make sure we could sign the other guys. Guess what he didn't do? <laughs> take he didn't less. take less. <laughs> right. But he did sign a contract that you can now restructure, sure. signing bonuses, all that kind of nonsense. You know, it's magic math is what it is. T. Higgins will not be a Cincinnati Bengal because there'll be two, three, four, five, six, ten other teams, playoff teams, that are going to say, man, he becomes either our primary receiver or, worst case, our number two receiver yeah. on a team that's already got one, Dallas Cowboys, and all of a sudden, you've now got a great one-two combination. The Cincinnati Bengals made a calculated error in not getting his deal done before he became an unrestricted free agent. Yeah, stupid. but they stupid, also, stupid, stupid, stupid. They stupid. also look at a receiver who missed five games this year. He's been injury prone ever since he's been a Bengal Valley. He's a great one-two punch with Chase. But at the end of the day, you sign it. You want to bring back a guy who you need. Like it's it's, it's oh, you're already missing Burrow, right? Now you're talking about Higgins this year. Like that was the big woes with the uh, the Bengals. They just couldn't stay healthy. Well. They here's the deal, and Jamar has not been paid yet. They've yeah. got to pay him. That's but right. The, the deal, the deal. Whenever you get a guy say, "Hey, the pie is only so big," which which essentially means we're not that interested. We're not that into right. you. Yeah. That, that's yeah. what it, that's yeah. what it means. It, it, like if you want to make it work, you'll make it work. Period. And you stop. Go, yeah. There's no question. So they're just looking at it like, "Hey, man, we don't want to spend this money on T. Higgins." That's all right. Or, or hey, make money else you want to take a hometown discount? We'd love to have you back. Right. But T. Higgins will be one of, if not the top wide receiver free agent on the market this year. He will but get a significant deal. Re that's why you have to restructure it. I agree. Before you become yeah. right. But, you got to get this thing done Look, before. This is a calculated mistake by the Cincinnati Bengals. And yes, Agreed. Jamar Chase is more important. You got to get him signed. And he's the security blanket for Joe Burrow. But you're not winning a Super Bowl without talent around those Facts. two guys. Yeah. And T. Higgins is a mad, talented receiver. He will never play another down for the Cincinnati Bengals. And you can blame the Bengals for that. Nobody else. Moving on to third and football. Third. Uh, it's a sports show. Let's talk about the Cowboys. No. Jerry Jones was saying things as he always does. This time he was talking about his quarterback, Dak Prescott. And uh, didn't exactly have glowing praise for Dak. Here's what he had to say. Dak has room for improvement, and not just the scheme around him, but Dak, uh, Dak can improve. That's a big plus when you've been playing the game seven years and you've, uh, by assessment, uh, have some uh, room to get better in. He did this year. I expect him to do it next year and the next year. I think it's fair to say that Dak dramatically improved last year to this season. Yeah. And he also has a huge cap hit for this season. Do you expect them to restructure his deal and sign him to a multi-year deal this offseason? Yeah, I think they have to, right? He's got he's 59 million 59. bucks against the cap, which is what? Like a quarter of the entire cap, you know, on one guy. So there's also not a lot of quarterbacks, or how about none, that are available that are better than him that you can go get on the free agency market. None. And you're not picking high enough to get a stud out of college. So the, the Gals Cowboys are in a weird spot. They have no choice. They have to restructure his deal. They have to extend him. They have to commit another three, four, five years to Dak Prescott as his starting quarterback. We all agree he's a top ten quarterback. Sure. So that's not really up for debate. Right. The issue is the playoffs. And even Dak Prescott said after that loss to the Green Bay Packers, quote, unquote, I sucked. 
And he owns that. And that's the narrative, and it's a fair narrative, that you're paying a guy top five money at the quarterback position to deliver in the postseason, and he's never done that. So whether it's acquiring other talent, whether it's listening to Micah or not, whether it's finding a running back better than Tony Pollard, all that stuff that the Cowboys have to do, Dak Prescott is in a great position. There are no available quarterbacks better than him. They've got to keep him, and they have to restructure his deal. Yeah. So when you add it all together, Dak Prescott's going to get a five, six-year extension, 40 to $50 million a year, and he will go into year nine with two playoff wins. <laughs> Period. Stop. And that's where we're at. Yeah. No, it's 100%. You're 100% right. They've got to re-sign him. They've yep. got to sign him to a long-term deal. They've got to be able to move that money around yep. fungible, as we talked about. So it's exactly what they'll do. And then it's a good thing. It's not a it's not a backhanded compliment to say a guy's getting better. That's We should get. As you get older, you, get you should get Hell better yeah. every single year. Now, you're going to lose athleticism. But you should, whatever you lose in athleticism, you'll make up for yeah. in knowledge of the game. Mm-hmm. And I hope you're getting better every year. Yeah, and he delivered. He talked about lowering the interceptions. He did that. Making better yeah. decisions with the football, especially in the regular season. He did that. Now, playoffs is a different question. Uh, but overall, we've seen his game elevate, right? So, I don't have no problems with that. I'm more worried about his offensive line. They, I mean, what's going to happen with Tyron Smith in, the, in, in free agency? Yeah. They're going to have to get some protection to keep him up. I think you got to worry about the Dallas Cowboy defense. They were down 27 nothing at home to the Green Bay Packers. Woo. in a playoff game in a building they had won 16 straight games in. So yeah. maybe Micah Parsons should put the microphone down mm. and remember how to make some tackles and sack a quarterback. I've been saying that. Pull the cord on that kid, yeah, man. Right? Like, just go ball. Uh, listen, we got much more coming up. Uh, they tell me after the break, we're going to the jaw. What? Oh, so the jaw is coming up. And is it possible that the New York Jets actually do make a head coaching change before the start of minicamps and the draft. That's on the table. We'll get into it right after this. Discovered at the base of a Mayan temple years ago, we have obtained a jar. A jar that has the supernatural power to make proclamations. We are now at the mercy of the jar. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, 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 yes. We are at the mercy of <laughs> the, the jar. jar. And the jar is now officially, although you can't see it, open for business. <laughs> no. Woo! It looks like the death <laughs> Yeah. Though they said do stuff that people at airports will stop and go, what the hell's happening on that show? <laughs> So that's this is the best we've ever looked, by the way. Well, the old makeup also said to me, we need help making Schlerth look good. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, Mark. All right, here that's we go. Unnecessary <laughs> roughness. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here rough. we go. Uh, into the jar we go. And the very first thing out of the jar is, okay, oh. here we go. Don't be surprised if the New York Jets bring in Mike Vrabel to be their head coach and decide to Woo. stab Robert Sala in the back while he's on vacation. Uh, I don't see that Ooh. happening. I think they're going to stick with Sala. I think if they make a move, it's going to be a total overhaul. But uh, I think Mike Vrabel, you may see him uh, in Washington. Is that right? Yeah. I can tell you that Robert Sala is on vacation right now, and there is some blood in the water after this silly article that came out yesterday. And now there's people suggesting maybe Woody Johnson is having second thoughts. But then I reminded myself, Aaron Rodgers runs this organization. Oh, there you and go. he yeah. wants Robert Sala there back. You go. So yes. Robert Sala is going to be fine. Yes, yes that's yes. right. Now, the Jets did not wish him happy birthday yesterday. Unfortunate. Oh. Their mistake, deal. not mine. They wished me a happy birthday. Oh, yeah. We do look similar. Priority. As you guys know. All right, number two out of the jar. Oh, oh, oh interesting. Oh. Very interesting. The jar says, don't believe the nonsense you hear. Jimmy Butler will never be a New York Nick. And oh, by the way, they don't need him. I like the jar. Mm-hmm. We don't nice need Jimmy Butler. We sure about that? Yeah, pretty oh, sure about okay. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 14 and 2 in January, Biggs. That's I mean, right. Jimmy but, Butler, Jimmy Buckets? Jimmy Buckets, that's right. I'm we just telling you what the jar said. You can discuss it at home, apparently. Jacoby, you want to jump in on that? Yeah, I will say that the New York Knicks are the best team in the National Basketball Association. They do Thank not you. need to upgrade in any way, shape, or form. They've lost two games in the month. In those two games, they lost by four points to the Mavs and the Orlando Magic. They should have won those two. They should be 60-0 to in the month. I like the way you think. Wow. All right, number three out wow. of the jar. The jar says, here's a fact for you, turkeys. 
Whoever has the longest winning streak has won 90% of all the Super Bowls ever played, meaning this year's winner is the are the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, How wow. About that? Yeah, and they have the best quarterback. Okay, they so do have helps. the better quarterback. That yes, helps. they do. I mean, yeah. San Fran, well, of course, has the better talent, though. Well, well do they? Yeah, they do. do they, they do. They do. Are you sure? Yeah, I gave you, you that top 10 list yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, from a talent, San Francisco, they are incredibly talented. They played probably two of their worst games they have played yeah. all uh -huh. season long in these last two playoff games. They came out with victories, and Kansas City, frankly, has played their best two games. Yeah, so and going barely in, won. Right, going, in, going into this thing, yeah, I'm, 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 they're playing better football right now. But I double-checked it. The jar is right from a historical perspective. The team that goes into the Super Bowl with the longest active winning streak has won more than 90% of all the Super Bowls ever played. I mean, it's called momentum, Craig. Oh, that's, that's just, okay. That's just oh. keeping one of them. But did, uh, did, <laughs> did the Chiefs wish Andy Reid a happy birthday? Uh, no, they well, did not. They came in the Super well, but it wasn't his <laughs> yeah. birthday, so all good. All oh, good. Well, yeah, yeah. All right, back into the jar we go. The jar says we got jar. The, the NBA should remove Anthony Davis from the all-time 75 list. I agree 100% oh. with that. If they could, maybe they the, would. Maybe they the most, could, they would. Yeah, maybe the most overrated player in the history of the NBA. I could name 75 players that deserve to be in the top 75 that are not named Anthony Davis. Well, Whoa. that's it, harsh. It would take me a couple hours, but I'd do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A podcast, maybe yeah. a yeah. podcast. Yeah. yeah, we'll do that. All right, let me go back inside the uh, the jar here. It's like on Saturday night. Uh, the jar says, um, I was listening to yesterday's show. On the, on the podcast. Yeah. Okay. Okay. On the podcast. On the podcast. On the podcast. Yeah. The Jar's a fan. Mark Slaird said there's only 12 teams trying to win a Super Bowl every year. Name five that aren't. Oh. 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 The Jar's challenging Jar's you, on the spot. Okay. Mr. Uh, Slaird, well, go ahead. I mean, the the Jets. Oh. oh. The Jets are not. We kind of walked right Jets. in that one. <laughs> I got right now, like, the Bengals for uh, – the, the Bengals, come on. The, the, they've already said we're not going to sign T. Higgins. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Jets, I, 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 uh, unfortunately, I had put my Broncos on there. For yeah. 30 years, they were a jewel in the crown of the National Football League under Pat Bowen. Yes. They are not right now. They're trying to get back there. But there are, you know, there are a bunch of teams that are in it, but they're not in it to win it. They're, yeah. not, they're not trying to win. The Steelers are a team that every year is going to try. They're, to win they're a committed. Yeah. They've got the ownership that's committed to winning a championship. Unfortunately, there are a lot of teams that aren't. Okay. Yeah. You named three of them. One of them is our beloved New York Giants. Yes, of Are the New York Giants trying to win a Super Bowl? The New York Giants have the infrastructure and the ownership in place, yeah. yes, to win a Super Bowl. Now, huh. fortunately, I think there's a lot of things that go into, yeah. you know, there's a lot of things go into, you know, who I, you choose to I think, pay. I think quarterback is quarterback a big, is right. a big yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't tell that me you're trying that. to win a Super Bowl. If Danny Jones got $140 million bucks <laughs> to be a starting quarterback, that tells me you're not trying to win a Super Bowl. But we right. can discuss that's, that at home. De that's desperation. I agree 100%. Yeah. All right, I got two more here out of the All jar. Right. There you go. The jar says, great news, guys. 14 days till pitchers and catchers show up. But when does the NHL season start? Oh, that's a good man. question. I'm unaware. That's rough. You, any idea when the NHL season starts? But the two weeks Valentine's from today, Day, Valentine's Day. pitchers oh, and catchers show up. So yeah, I know your son played up professional baseball. Uh -huh. That's a big day in the Schlereth household, I'm it, sure. Yeah, pitchers and catchers, big day. Big, big, day. big day. Big day. <laughs> big day. <laughs> big day. Big day. I, I tell you what's story. a big day. Big day. Yeah. Canada. Huh? Hockey in Canada is a big day. Yeah, every, when does that day. start? Does every anybody day. know? For them, yes, it starts year round. I don't know. Maybe. You have that? I don't know when the NHL starts. Um, all right, what do we got here? Oh, that's a weird other one. All right, final one. Here we go. Oh, this is a visual clue out you of get, the jar. You gave me the look for a second. I got nervous. They're like, <laughs> oh, Willie. No, because usually John, he picks don't go to Willie. No, but sometimes he'll peek out the corner of his eye, and I'm like, oh, here it comes. All right, final one from the jar. The jar believes in the current direction society's going, it says here, and says, good news, fellas. If Willie and Mark had a baby, this is what the newborn would look like. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fat bastard. Well, I can see the hair, right? Yeah. I got the hair. But here's the best part. <laughs> and those are my, those are my uh, boobs. <laughs> the the pigment question. is close. Yeah. I was just saying, yeah, yeah. why did you guys tan the fat bastard? <laughs> right. Why? He looks like a dirty hash brown. Yeah, How big that's... is that towel? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a, a dirty hash brown. <laughs> <Yeah>. Anyhow. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, we made a boy, so that yeah, helps. You made yeah. a boy. You made a boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got. Good to have a first uh, one. Yes, all, John, your first job. Yeah. All right, coming up, uh, Super Bowl 58. We got Micah Parsons talking about Jerry Jones saying they're all in for 2024. And we got Travis Kelsey talking about flipping the switch for Kansas City to win another Super Bowl right after this. Travis Kelsey on the New Heights podcast brought to you by Wave Sports Entertainment. He spoke about the Chiefs and their approach to the season and the postseason and flipping the switch. Here is Mr. Swift. I think there's just that 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 flip of the switch that you you kind of turn on in December. Yeah. Sense of urgency. You know, you want to try and have that switch for the entire year, but it's a 17 game season, man. Sometimes it's just, I mean, it's hard, man. It's hard, especially after 11 years, getting excited for a random game in f-ing November where you know you're about to wax this f-ing team. It's hard <laughs> to get it going every single week. And um, yeah. this year it was, it, was, it was harder than ever. Okay. Are you sold on the Chiefs being a completely different team during the regular season and flipping the switch in the postseason? First off, Jason Kelsey has no idea what it's like to flip the switch. The Eagles went the other way in December. Yeah, exactly. So he ain't yeah. got no idea what it's like to turn it on uh, in the month of December. You know, it's funny. When you win, we accept things we would otherwise never accept as fans. Bad. And because they're winning and they're in the Super Bowl, that's cute. Oh, that's Travis being Travis. Oh, he's the greatest tight end of all time, all that stuff. But the reality is that, you know, when I give you my hard-earned money to come watch you play, I don't want to hear about any switches not being turned on. I expect you to play your best because I spent my hard-earned money to watch the product. And if you're losing, that would piss me off as a fan. It doesn't because they're in the Super Bowl. But if Kansas City had been eliminated, and they weren't, so they get, you know, they're playing with house money in that regard, and I'm a Chiefs fan, you know, they dropped $5,000 this year. I go into a couple Chiefs games with my kids. I would be livid if you told me as one of the best players on my team, yeah, it's hard for me to care about that game Sunday night against the Carolina Panthers because they suck and it's a long season. Like, dude, you're making $15 million a yeah. year. Uh, I don't want to hear that. I'm not making 15 million bucks a year, and you better play your ass off because I paid to watch you play. So he gets away with it because they're in the Super Bowl, but the attitude sucks. Yeah, but he's speaking to complacency, but he's also right at the same time. If you've played on good teams, there is this kind of – I don't know what the word is, but there's this in the back of your head. You can turn it on when you want to turn it on. But when you're not able to turn it on and the same mistakes you were making in week one, you were winning. Now you're making in week 12 and you're losing. Now those things get magnified. So I think he's just speaking to what he's been able to do and they've been able to do it. Here they are. They're in the Super Bowl. You know what we want from our athletes? We want the truth until they tell you yeah, the truth. Correct. Then we don't want it anymore. <laughs> exactly. like that's, that's how it works. And what, what I get out of that is you can't play 17, 18 weeks on adrenaline. Mm-hmm. You can't. Right. You, so you're a professional, and there's nobody any more professional than that guy. I mean, the guy practices every day. That dude, you talk to anybody on Kansas City, yeah. you talk to. Fourth through injuries. Yeah, I mean, oh. it, so he does it the right way. But there are those weeks. It's a grind. It's a, Physically and mentally, it's a grind. It doesn't mean you don't go out on Sunday and play your ass off and try to win. Sure. But it's mentally, it wears you down. And, then and you there gotta, is that. And, and, and Marcus, you got to find it. Like playing in a cold weather city like in Denver or Pittsburgh, it's gray early. It gets dark early. And if you're in, if you're in a situation where your team just is, can't get right, man, what? you start to get depressed. Guys go through depression in the middle of the season. I'm, that's I, why, I, that's I, why I, Miami will never be good. Exactly. Why? Miami will never. Like, it's too much to do. But what's going on? Because you, you, I mean, everywhere else, it's miserable. It's gray. It's nasty. The coach is on your ass. You know, it's, it, things aren't going well. Yep. You got to just grind through it. And that, in Miami, you walk out of the facility, and you're like, man, it's beautiful here. Yeah, Let's palm go. trees. Yeah, we, we walked in. We we did a Super Bowl in Miami. There was a big grease board. One of the I'm not going to say the guy's name, but he came in and go and gave the top ten reasons on the grease board. Uh, Wednesday morning, why the Miami Dolphins will never win a Super Bowl. Mm. And, and part of it was 10- because they're in South Beach and all the distractions. Right. It's like, right. Yeah, it was like all, all these strip clubs. That was well, they all say, you know, one of the reasons, Vic, right. uh, yeah. as the story now goes, one of the reasons Vic Fangio wanted out of Miami is that there were guys that didn't put in the work and would rather yeah. be at the strip clubs on the beach, you know, talking to pretty sure. girls and, you know, going to live in Fountain Blue and all that stuff uh, and having milkshakes at Kith instead of buying clothes <laughs> that are outrageously overpriced. Uh, but, yeah, 
And that's why he wanted out of Miami, because they didn't buy into being a professional. But I got to speak up for the fans here. And I say this with all due respect of what you guys just said. It's a grind that none of us could ever imagine. So I'm not suggesting that it's easy playing a 17-week season or an 18-week season mm. in the NFL. I don't understand what that's like, so I'm not going to knock that aspect of it. But I'm going to knock that aspect of it because no one told you to sign up to play. Oh, no one, nobody said you had to take a job that pays you an ungodly amount of money and only go to work 17 days a year. Mm -hmm. Like, no one said, you know, if you don't want to work you you know, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August, that you don't want that job. Fans pay good money to watch you guys do something that no one else in the world can do. And when I hear a guy tell me, man, it's hard to really care about that game because – Yo, we got 17 of them. But, I'm like, dude, they give me my money back. But, Craig, it's not just about the start of the season and playing all 18. It's getting prepared for the season, competing in training camp, uh, literally trying to fight for your job. While, you know, the man, like, if, you know, him being yeah. an old dog, me the new dog, like, no matter what he's done in his career, I'm coming for his job. And to be able to survive that and yeah. then play in the season. So, it's not just about because we get paid the money. Because yeah. the money doesn't equate for you being uh, missing from your family, uh, the injuries you suffer, uh, the mental trauma you deal with from getting, you know, all the other stuff. So it's a lot. It's just you, not about the But it does, it does you, equate to being right. uh, retired at 35 right. you and being able to live any life you want to live. you retire not because you, you play for free. Sundays are free. Correct. You, you pay me to work Monday through Saturday yeah. and to prepare in the offseason and to do all that stuff. And what drives you out of the game, you know, injuries and all that stuff. But it, sure. really, it really becomes – it's not Sunday. It really becomes all the work that you have to do year-round – to prepare yourself both physically and mentally. So, yeah. See? sure. It's the guy that got cut in the JV. Yeah. <laughs> why, why would it? Well, you would never understand. It's, it's a lot. I acknowledge I don't know what it's like to be a professional right. athlete. And we know your story 23 operations. So, you, know, you Think fought about that. and fought and fought. 23 to operations. Stay in the game. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. 29. I mean, this man's body was opened up 29 yeah. times. For some. He exaggerated half of them. Right? Okay. You know, an arthroscope is not surgery. Let's not pretend like yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, not, they, it's not on <laughs> other people. On you, it's a big right. deal, right? No, it's I on other it. guys, it's, it's not. It's just like, I think sometimes. We lose sight as fans of what it takes to be you guys. Mm -hmm. I'll own that. And I think you guys, collectively, lose sight of what it's like to be us. Oh, there's and a, I think there's uh, a disconnect. That, I, think there's, I think that is 100%. I think that's 100% real. Yeah. And, and I always say this, like, like people will tell you, oh, I, I, you know, I played for free. No, you wouldn't. Not if you were good enough nope. to get paid. <laughs> right. you, would, you would not right. pay for, you would right. not play for free. Yeah. And, and the reason that most people don't play – Okay, this is the reason most people okay. – one, they're not talented enough. Fair enough. And two, they don't have balls enough to do it. Facts. I buy AM. Okay. I buy that. And, that, and so there is, there is a, a – there's 1,500 people in the world that are blessed enough and talented enough and crazy enough to play this game. Yeah. And then, and, to be fair, there's also a couple dozen out there whose mommy and daddy won't let them play. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. That, that exists too. That's right. out there. What else you got, Jacoby? Moving on to our second headline, and um, it involves the New York Jets, and it is not good. The Athletic what? did a scathing article about the a Jets scathing. and all the dysfunction piece. that is happening in New Jersey. And here's just a, a couple headlines, a couple highlights about this article. Yeah. They said, oh, yeah, uh, one Jets coach said it's a mess. And then uh, one AFC GM said Rodgers isn't the assistant GM. Joe Douglas is the assistant GM. Yeah. And Hackett said that they do whatever Aaron wants. How do you feel after reading this article? Uh, the first two, to me, are lazy reporting and easy just to rely on yeah. anonymous sources. And I hate anonymous sources. I know, I know it's a product of being a reporter and building relationships. And there are times you can't reveal who that person is. And I do respect right. that aspect of reporting. That being said... You're telling me that a general manager outside of the New York Jets is aware of the inner workings of the New York Jets front office? I call BS on that. We can all sit back and suggest we know what's going yeah. on, and we can see what took place with the players the New York Jets did sign in this offseason. They were all Aaron Rodgers' guys. We sat on the show, and we said it. But to now put together an article that is filled with 90% of it stuff we already knew and 85% of it anonymous crap that we already knew or heard whispers about in an effort to try to embarrass the New York Jets or get people fired, I say no thank you. You know, we said all year long 
that virtually every player that the Jets brought in was the guy that Aaron Rodgers asked them to bring in. How'd it go, Chris? Aaron Lazard, Dalvin Cook, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it didn't work out. And we jokingly said on this show every single week that Aaron Rodgers is the de facto general manager. I don't have the athletic to beg me for clicks to write something that I've been talking about every day on this show for the last six months. And you've been talking about yep. it. And you guys have been talking about it. Anonymous GMs, bullcrap. All right, the reality is this. The New York Jets season ended and became quote-unquote dysfunctional on the fourth play of the season against the Buffalo Bills where we lost Aaron Rodgers. Now, the Jets do have to answer, Joe Douglas should, as to why he didn't have a better backup plan of quarterback, why he was unwilling to bring in a veteran to help Zach Wilson out, even if Zach was going to get a chance no matter what. Robert Salas should have to answer questions about game planning stuff. Nathaniel Haggett should have to answer questions about why he didn't change the offense to accommodate for a different skill set that Zach or whomever brought to the table. But the notion that this is some kind of you know, clown operation is not accurate. I would tell you this as a longtime Jet fan. This might be the most competent group of people they've had in that building in 25 huh. years. So I, I don't I don't Go ahead. discount that. Yeah. But I would tell you the one issue you have. Bring I it. understand that Rodgers is a big deal, right? Yeah. I understand right. But you know what? There has got to be, and we used to say this all the time, owners own, they write checks, yep. mm-hmm. coaches coach, players play. Right, right. And you know what? All the complaints in Green Bay about you're not getting me talent, you're not getting me first round receivers, you're not getting me this. How'd that young receiving core look in Green Bay? Ball. How did my hey, young quarterback look in Green Bay? Good. The last 12, since week 12 on, there was nobody that played better yeah. than Jordan Love. So the bottom line is, hey man, I understand that you want the relationships and you want it. That's fine. Yeah, we can we can accommodate some of those, but you can't make the decisions. You're not in charge. I agree. Here. I and, agree. I think that's where the Jets made a calculated mistake. It's right. one thing. Look. We all agreed you get Aaron Rodgers, go get him. He represents something we've never had, and that's a legitimate Hall of yeah. Fame quarterback. Never had it. All due respect to Joe Namath, who's in the Hall of Fame, right, for different reasons. So I was down with it. I've got a legitimate chance to win now. Top five defense, rock star quarterback. Correct. So if you lose the rock star quarterback in the history of football, there's only one or two examples where a team was able to overcome that and actually win games and maybe even make it to the playoffs. The Jets couldn't overcome it. Do they have to take responsibility for that? Yes, they do. Do they have to take responsibility for allowing Aaron to dictate virtually everything that took place? Yes, they do. But let's not get it twisted. If Aaron Rodgers was healthy, and he wasn't, and played 17 games for the New York Jets, the New York Jets are in the playoffs, and that's not for debate. So so play it out now. The New York Jets made a deal with the devil that Aaron Rodgers is going to be their quarterback, and he's going to play multiple years for the New York Jets, and he feels like a rejuvenated guy. And we saw that all summer. He was a different dude Uh from the guy we saw at the end of his career in Green Bay. Why shouldn't they run it back with Aaron Rodgers? Of course they should. Because, again, if Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, and obviously that's a question mark at his age with that Achilles injury, the New York Jets are a top three or four team in the league, not just the conference. So if I I am a Jet fan, and if I could come back with the same exact guys and Aaron Rodgers plays – I'm winning 12 games. You, uh, I'm going when to you say same as that, guys, you mean on the field or on the sideline? You Both. still want Nathaniel Hackett and Robert Sala to run your franchise? Because, because Aaron Rodgers is my quarterback, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. And I'll, I'll give it to you this way. Who else is who else going to give the job to that's going to be better if Aaron Rodgers is not the co- co- quarterback? There's no answer. They're a bad team without a quarterback. You give me Aaron Rodgers – any one of us could coach that team because I got a rock star quarterback who, like Peyton Manning and, in Denver, and, and, and is going to run the and, offense. And let me just say that that from an offensive line, because I keep hearing, well, their offensive line stinks. It did stink. Okay, but when well, they but, lost Vera Tucker, right. Beckton didn't play. But well. let me just tell you how how it works. Like if you give up seven sacks in a weekend, I won't tell you that your offensive line sucks. I'll tell you your play caller sucks. Okay, That's good all point. right, yeah. And so one of the things you have to do, and this is part of having a veteran quarterback in there, right? You say, okay, 
any given game, we're going to throw it 30 times. Mm -hmm. How do we eliminate sacks and how do we eliminate pressures on our quarterback? Well, what do we do? Three-step drops. We have five three-step drops. We have we move the pocket, right? We have change the launch angle. We have a couple of bubble screens, right? Now I'm down to, hey, now it's 20. Now, okay, now I got a couple five-step drops Mm -hmm. with no hitch. So now I can upkick that. I can change the dynamic of what we're doing up front. We run the ball. We do that. Next thing I know, I whittle it down to about 10 times where we have to hold up. If you can't hold up on 10 pass protections, on 10, you know, five-step drops with a hitch or a seven-step drop, then you suck. As a group, like so. so the bottom you. line, from a coaching standpoint, and the guy operating at the quarterback position, he's got to be able to handle it. He's got to be able to handle those things. And, and if you fair, do that, you are you all of a sudden take a ragtag group, and you're pretty right. good. So yeah. here's what, what Mark's saying, if I understand correctly. Okay. It's a Hackett issue one, and it's a quarterback issue two. And I, I could I could back that up because we talked about it yeah. on the show. We're not going to show it to you now, obviously, because we know we were going down this road. But uh, on the first one of the first plays of the game, of the four plays that Aaron Rodgers played, he's got Garrett Wilson wide open, running a slant right in front mm-hmm. of him, and holds on to the ball. Dwayne Brown eventually gets beat. Bag yeah. down goes Rodgers. If Aaron Rodgers gets rid of that ball, A, it's a first down. B, he never gets sacked. C, he never gets hurt. So I respect what you're saying a great deal. Nathaniel Hackett did not do a good job after the Aaron Rodgers injury no. in coming up with a, a scheme or a game plan to take advantage of the attributes of Zach's game that are very good. His ability to get out of the pocket, you know, throw on the run, those things he does well. And we never, you know, made a game well, they, plan to accommodate that. One, they didn't that. trust him. And the offensive yeah. line went bad, especially when Elijah Vera Tucker went down. That was a big blow to them. And, and you talk about Tittman. They didn't think he was going to be ready. So there was a lot of miscues up and down that line. By the way, the Jets are favorites to win the AFC East next year if Allen Rodgers is the starting quarterback. So get that through, you thick heads, athletic. Um, what else you got, Jacoby? Are they really? Huh? Are they really? Just go with that. Okay. Because <laughs> right, the Bills are still in the East, right? All right, Micah Parsons. Guess what? He's got a podcast. Guess we did that podcast. He talked about the Cowboys. And he talked about Jerry Jones being all in. And here is what Parsons said on his podcast. And I quote, I'm 24 years old. I've been in this league three years, and I've kind of seen it all. I hope we go all in. I hope that we go out and get the players that we're missing because we didn't do that this year. I find this shocking, Mr. Curtin. What do you think about Mr. Well, Parsons? I think if Michael comment? Parsons never played another day, he'd be a fart in the wind of the NFL. Uh, nobody would remember that Michael Parsons ever existed. So the notion of I'm 24 years old. I've seen it all. I've seen it all? Mark Schleyer, has he seen it all? No. no. Absolutely no. Thank not, you. Not in any way, shape, or form. Right. And no one's suggesting you're not a great player. You are. He's a great player. Great player. He's one of the yeah. best defensive players in the sport. But his mouth's getting him in trouble. And I'm not one of these guys that says, you know, shut up and dribble. I don't believe in that. I believe you have something to say, say it. Sure. But you also have to be smart because you put your teammates in harm's way and you put a bullseye on your ass. And when you're down 27 nothing at home to the Green Bay Packers and you've done nothing mm. as the best defensive player mm. the Cowboys have had in a decade, we're going to start taking that magnifying Mag- no, uh, with the telescope? Yeah. Magnifying glass. Magnifying glass. You had it, buddy. You yeah. had it. Yeah. Microscope. Yeah. Microscope. Yeah. Microscope. 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 Woo-hoo! That a boy. Right. Microscope and start looking at what you don't do. Because it's easy to sit back if I'm a Dallas Cowboy and go, oh, just talk about Dak. It's Dak's fault. Talk about Jerry. Talk about Mike. Don't look at me. And three years into his amazing uh, young career, he's on the field while the Green Bay Packers are up 27 nothing. What did you do to stop that? Yeah. Because I think it's time we start looking at Micah Parsons, who uh, you wanted to be compared to the great Lawrence Taylor five months ago. How'd that work out? Well, I, also, I, was, I would also tell him you got to stay out of your players' pockets, right? Because if you're asking for more guys to come along, that means somebody has to get cut or somebody has to get traded or somebody gets released. At the end of the day, it was your defense that let down this team throughout the season right. and even into the playoffs. So now you're talking about Jonathan Hankins, who was, was dealing with injuries, right? He's an old guy. Talking about Mozzie Smith, a young guy who didn't play well. You talk about Demarcus Lawrence on the other side was spotty at times. You're talking about, you know, Van Ash dealing with a neck. So now you're saying if you need more, well, those right. are the guys that are in question. 
So now if, I, if I'm your teammate, I'm like, speak for yourself, right? Don't bring in nobody that's coming to replace me. I like being here. I like well, my you, place of employment. You're a first-round draft pick. You're supposed to be the guy. You're not supposed to ask for help. Like, no. you're supposed to be the guy. Yeah, if you, He literally went on Twitter and said, I want to be the MVP of the league. So you're supposed to be him. You can't. If you're him, you can't raise your hand and say, I need some help. Yeah, well, you're supposed to be the guy. He's basically okay. the Dak Prescott of the defense. Go ahead, dude, well, dude, I mean, look at your team. I mean, if we put them man for man on paper, like they would be one of the top five Thank talented yeah. football got, teams Ross in the National the Football League. Right. And, you know, and I, I say this all the time, if the games were played on paper, I'd have spent a lot less time on an operating table. <laughs> they're, they're not. <laughs> yeah. They're not played on paper. So, you know what? You guys got to go. You guys got to go out and play. You, gotta go you guys got to go show that, like, that you're not just, you know, paper champions or paper tigers. Mm. You got to go out and win playoffs. I went back and I checked while these guys were mumbling here uh, <laughs> about what Micah did in that playoff game against the Green Bay Packers. How'd it go? The great Micah Parsons had two tackles. Oh. Mm. Two tackles. Best defensive player since Lawrence Taylor <laughs> had two total tackles. So now here's my question for you two knuckleheads. How does that play in the locker room? When Micah Parsons has two tackles in a playoff game and they get embarrassed on the defensive side of the ball and he's out there chirping about what the Dallas Cowboys didn't do to get more talent here to help him out. Well, that's the problem, the chirping, right? When you don't produce and you talk, that's a problem. Okay? Right. So a lot of guys, when you start seeing that, one, they're tone deaf, and then the guy next to you stops listening to you because now, now your mouth is speaking more than your action. And that's the issue with the Cowboys right now, particularly Michael Parsons. After losses or a significant, you know, when he didn't pop off the tape, he still has something to say. I don't know in what world is that okay. Like, I know, it's, it like, shouldn't it, be. And it's still a but that's room. the new world. Right? That's lot, the new athlete. Yeah. But it, I got to talk nonstop. I, people got to hear what I have to say. Yeah, well, I mean, a, but a lot of times, like, anytime you walk out, you break a huddle, you know, you're an offensive player, you got to plan for number 11. Like, how are we going to sure. take care sure. of number 11? So there's always going to be Seems some like they form, figured out how to plan right, for well, number 11. there's always going to be some form of double team. There's always going to be some form of slide to him. There's going to be something to take care of that guy because he's an exceptional player. But when you're not putting up multiple sacks and you're not putting up multiple tackles and you're not making the difference and you go down 27 to nothing, that's when you're supposed to keep your mouth Correct. shut. Let me ask Correct. you a question. Where, and I, I tease you about this on and off air so everyone knows the, it's real. When you guys decided that we're not speaking to the media, you're the offensive line yeah, of the yeah, Denver yeah. Broncos during the championship run. I was there and it was a big deal. They took the fine. We ain't talking. Uh, a, why'd you guys do it? And B, when there were guys in the locker room like a Micah who would chirp, did you guys try to control that in your locker room? Yeah, in our locker room, yeah, absolutely. There was an accountability factor. We, the only reason we didn't talk to the media, I talked to the media every day. It just nothing was on the record. So, like, I mean, I talked to you. source right yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> me, you know, Adam, Adam Schefter and I were, were tight buddies. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and so uh, he was a beat writer at the he time. He worked for, the, I think, the Denver Post at the time. Yeah, the Denver yeah. Post. Yep. Yeah. But that was just a game. That was just something to keep ourselves entertained. That's all that was. Uh, you know, when we went to when we went to the Super Bowls, we went we we sat down and talked to everybody. Like it was that we lifted the the band. You, you lifted the band, oh, right? Yeah. But the but the biggest issue is, and and I think this is a maturity issue, and and Michael Parsons needs to understand this. Is you know the the saying is, don't point the finger, pull the thumb. Like don't start pointing the finger at people. It's right here, man. What? Can, right hold here. on. Right Can here. you say that? I, so I said that early in this no, year. No, you didn't. Oh, my God. I said that <laughs> on this desk. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's like, Willie, the thumb. Who pulls the thumb? I, that's been told to pull, me. That, pull the thumb. Thank you. Pull it. It's me. And so it takes more yeah, to say right. for you to be like, oh, I uh, guess that's no, no, Hold on. I'm questioning it because I don't know what the hell it means. <laughs> what do you, well, don't you, point don't the finger. Don't point the thumb. It's I take thought responsibility. the saying was <laughs> when you point the finger at someone, there's three fingers pointing back at you. Yeah, that's another thing. What does thumb have to do with it? Your thumb's right there. Yeah. And we were talking, I mentioned the thumb. You're like, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard, Willie. <laughs> well, let me say this. <laughs> that was actually really good. <laughs> Mark, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Right. <laughs> well, we well, yeah. suck. But again, again, take responsibility. Nobody wants to hear how bad everybody else played. <laughs> mm -hmm. Take responsibility, yeah. and that's the, that's. I, what, I mean, to me, that's the bottom line. I want to put a button Cowboys. on it by saying that you, where you started. The roster is not the problem with the Cowboys. No. no but if no. you're Micah Parsons and you're being like, oh, we need to bring some more players in here, the roster is not but the problem with they the took Cowboys. Him off the ball. He was playing a true linebacker position and still didn't have an impact. So they, they try to move him around where he can get busy. He just did. Here's the good news you guys have proven a point I've always known about the NFL. 
they give you guys talking points. And you guys all get the same scripts, don't you? Uh, uh, talk about the thumb, not the finger. Uh, talk about – Those no, it's called good coaching. <laughs> we just receive yeah, it. Yeah, we yeah. soak it up. Coachable. Yeah, coachable. Coachable. You want to start naming some of your coaches or not? Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. That's some good ones. That Howard, Tomlin, Rex Ryan. Rex is my dude right yeah. there. Yeah, Russ Grimm. Hall Russ of Grimm, the great there Russ go. Grimm. There we go. So, Star name drop it. Here we go. All right. Coming <laughs> here up. we go. Here we go. Coming up, we have a special moment in the San Francisco locker room between Nick Bosa and Brock Purdy. Oh. And we can now ask the question, have we even seen the best yet of the machine Brock Purdy? Right after this. Machine. The machine. Two San Jose State alumni who protested during the 1968 Olympics. They intended to draw global attention to the plight of people of color in the U.S., spotlighting injustice and quality endured by millions of black Americans. Mr. Smith raised his right fist to represent black power. Mr. Carlos wore a bead necklace to symbolize lynching of black Americans and raised his left fist to represent black unity. The scarf he wore stood for black pride and the socks with no shoes represented African-American poverty. Their powerful silent protest was controversial, but it woke folks up and created greater opportunity for those that followed. This Black History Month, I salute you both. Uh, throughout all of February, all your uh, favorite uh, hosts on FS1 will be honoring and acknowledging some of the great efforts by African-American athletes, politicians, and just regular average everyday people who uh, made a difference in our country. So great job there. Bye, James Jones. Welcome back. That's Jacoby, of course. Hey. We got Mark Schlerz right here. And we got my main man, Willie Colon. Obviously, one of the big stories this season, it, it kind of carried on from last year, was the great play by Brock Purdy. You know, kind of coming out of left field, no one knew how good this kid could be. And there's this great moment in the locker room after San Francisco uh, did beat Detroit to get to the Super Bowl between Nick Bosa and Brock Purdy. And Bosa says to, uh, to uh, Brock, bro, bro, the fact that you're doing this blows my mind. Did you think you'd be this good? Real kind of caveman type stuff there. And Brock Purdy, <laughs> to be fair, and I've seen the video, we don't have the rights to play it for you. No. It's really kind of awkward, and he's like, honestly, y'all, uh, I think I can do better, bro. <laughs> and he's, he's like, one guy's like, yo, bro, man, you really slayed him, bro. Oh, man, how great was that? And then the other guy's like, you know, I think I can really actually be a little bit better. And if you just give me a chance, I'll show you that. I'm the second coming of Joe Montana. They call me the machine, but I can be better. Yeah. And it's this great kind of comparison and juxtaposition between like frat douche and <laughs> like the guy you don't pay any mind but the assassin who's going to take you out it was awesome yeah i mean if you saw how he was what he was dressed like for the game like an accountant so, yeah, yeah. He, he looked like a guidance counselor like, it, was, it, <laughs> yeah. it was clearly like who brock purdy is so um he's like are those bugle boy jeans you're wearing right. yeah. yeah doppers on it, just, it wasn't a look it's also, <laughs> it wasn't it's also look. like let's be honest brock purdy did not play well in the first half of either of those two games no, like he no. could definitely do better he is right like oh do you think he could be better it's like yeah uh i threw a terrible pick and i didn't get any yards in the first half very self-aware yeah now look now you're going up against obviously a kansas city secondary that is very good and if he struggles and he might struggle because you have right. a very good pass defense uh, with kansas city but could you imagine for a second like this story to me the only happy ending, and take rooting interest aside, I have no rooting interest in the game. Like any fan, I want to see a great game with odds to come down you know, to the last possession like a lot of these games have for San Francisco. But could you imagine this kid out-dueling the greatest quarterback Ooh. in the league in Patrick Mahomes and leading San Francisco to a title? You know, one of the reasons America fell in love with Detroit is that they've never been there. Yeah. That's part of the story. Hey, let's watch a team that's never been there win because that means my team's got a shot next year. My team doesn't win, right? Mm -hmm. Now we've got a team that's got, what, five Super Bowl championships. These guys have won two out of the last three. It's like, God, who do I root against? But I view it the other way. How do you not root for, unless you're a Chiefs fan, Brock Purdy winning a Super Bowl. That story it, would be awesome. It, it, it's a great story. There's no question. I think America has a rooting interest in that. In him. Because he's, yeah. he's, the, he's the ultimate underdog. Yeah. And we love 
the ultimate underdog. But what he's going to face, and, you know, you talked about uh, Patrick Mahomes. What you're going to face is dog. Spags yeah. and that defense. Mm-hmm. And that defense is exceptional. And I think one of the things that Spag does a great job of yeah. every week is finding what your weakness is and making you play to that weakness last week. In the AFC Championship game, that defense did a tremendous job with their rush plan against Lamar. And I think one of the things you'll see is when they brought pressure, look at all the people they're bringing, right? They're corralling him. They call this a cage rush. But even when you get there, what's happening? Everybody stops, stays engaged, and you squeeze the pocket down. And the big issue for for Kansas City or for anybody when they're facing Lamar, I watched consistently – Anytime you got a free runner, like you got a guy that was freed up, yep. what happened? He makes a miss, then he gets outside of the pocket. There are six guys coming right there. Every gap is full. And they weren't trying to get free runners at him. Right. They were actually yeah. like, So let me down. stop you there and ask you the question. Yeah. One of the things we saw specifically for Brock Purdy, a little out of character for him yeah. in the win against Detroit, and Jacoby's brought up a number of times this week, his ability off script to run. Yep. Now – can they account for that? And do you do the same thing you just showed us to stop if if right. things are breaking down and the secondary is doing its job? We now know you at least have to have in the back of your mind the kid can run if he has to. It's not the focus of his game, obviously. Right. Do they do the same thing well, to stop see, it? I, I think the big thing for them is you have to make San Francisco – operate in a drop back game. Mm-hmm. So then it becomes how are we going to defend the run? How are we going to get them out of their play action stuff? Because Kyle Shanahan is the best, best in the league when it comes to designing plays that marry identical to their run game and they create space for their receivers and their receivers end up catching the ball in space and then sure. they all become running backs. So, so yeah. that, that's the I want to ask you another question because yeah. when you show that, I'm saying to myself, well, look, you played for a long time. You played for a long time. Yeah. You guys can break down film and explain stuff to us that we wouldn't know or see. So I, I love watching those kinds of videos. But in the back of my head, I'm saying to myself, great that Spagnola, defensive coordinator, right. obviously, for Kansas City, can come up with that plan. But I also view it the other side. Like, Todd Monkey gets paid a lot of money sure. to be the Ravens' offensive coordinator. And I'm saying to myself, if Spags is coming up with creative ways to stop mm-hmm. part of what you do on offense, why aren't you now adjusting to combat that? And one of the things that really got me a lot, and we've said it a lot of times this week in the show, and I don't want to you know, rehash the Baltimore right, game yeah. too much because we're moving forward to the Super Bowl, but somehow, some way, Baltimore forgot who they were. Yes. Correct. And they yeah. changed what they did well. And to me, you're going to have a much better chance of winning doing what you do best. So I don't care what Spagnola did. Why did I stop running the ball? Yeah, well, that's – I mean, therein lies the $64,000 question. Why would you get away from what you do well? Right. And, and, and the one touchdown drive that they had, remember, there was a fourth down and one that was a design quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. quarterback uh, right. power. The Marsha just right, damn ran. Right. Yeah. And then the very next play, they ran another power play where they get numbers on the edge. They pulled their uh, left guard again. Yep. And they had another, like, nine-yard run in that. And then they just got away from it. And it was almost as though they decided to say, hey, listen, our guy's the MVP, and we're going to out Mahomes Mahomes. And that's the yeah. dumbest – that's the dumb – you're – Be who you are. Yeah, Lamar – like, you could, you could sit there and praise Lamar all day long. But where Lamar has struggled, and any coordinator I've talked to that has faced the Baltimore Colts – or, excuse me, the Baltimore Colts – the Baltimore Ravens, yeah. every one of them said the same thing. Okay. We're going to make him – be, he's got to tr- beat us from the pocket yeah. because we feel like that's the so best So let me bring this win. back to San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, can they do the same thing to San Francisco or is Shanahan too good? I think Shanahan's too good. Uh, I honestly think so because I think when Brock Purdy, when he gets in his empty formation and it's just him operating, you got Debo in the slot with Christian McCaffrey and obviously Kittle coming in and out in motion, you, you really see an offense where he just he can see the whole field. And that's the thing Brock Purdy do, does really well. He sees the whole field. He knows where his progressions are. Right. And at the end of the day, he retains information really well at a high level. The issue with getting to Brock Purdy, and we saw it against when the Ravens came, you got to knock him off a spot. You can't send him, you can't have him drop back and just sit there because he'll pick you apart. You you got to fire at him. You got to make sure that when his eyes look here, that he can get down to the rush. And he's disciplined with the football. So at the end of the day, if you can get him looking at the rush, you can get him moving out of the pocket. That's your shot. Here's what here's what the Chiefs have to do. They have got to eliminate their ability to run the football because all their good passing stuff, all their play action stuff, 
is what makes them special. Yeah. They are not. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, their receivers are not great individual route runners. Mm. They do not do a great job of lining up in a three-by-one formation and just beating you running routes. They, they beat you with their scheme. That's really what they beat you with. And so, so it's really they a battle them, of uh, sideline minds. Yeah. Right? If Which they guy outdoes the if other If they can make you a drop-back team, okay. that's what the two teams have done. They've played so far. Now, Brock Purdy has found a way at the end of the game to make some pretty special plays. Yeah. Sure. Right? He's done that. But they have not been great. They, they've been as, as bad as they've been the last two weeks. It's as bad as they've been offensively all season long. Much more coming up uh, as we uh, get closer to Super Bowl 58. Uh, before we take a break, one. NBA oh. thing. Sorry, Philadelphia, but yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Hold it over there. Don't get too excited. Uh, Joe Allen Bede is the best player in basketball right now. Oh, he's hurt yet again. He always gets hurt. MRI on the left knee. He's not playing against the Utah Jazz. Now, I know Philadelphia 76ers fans are going to claim right now they don't care about this, but I know a fact that they do. He can't miss more than five more games this year and be eligible for the MVP award. So remember, he missed, I the, love he missed the game against Denver, and it does feel like he's trying to get to 65. It feels like he, he played in a game that maybe he wouldn't play in if this rule wasn't in place, and he ends up getting hurt. I think this is bad for the league. Uh, I love it. I happen to love it because I don't think you give MVP awards out to guys who play half the season or three quarters. I don't root for the injury, of course. I hope he's better because he is great to watch, and he right now is the best scorer in the NBA. Hold on, hold on. Head of the Knicks in the standings. I don't know. But how, how about this? I don't know if we need him to play. Here's the, deal. No. the New York Knicks are only a game and a half behind Philly right now, and they are this close to actually getting up to the number two seed oh. in the East. They're probably not going to catch the Celtics, but if you have a February like January, Mark yeah. Flareth, take your nuggets and shove it <laughs> because yeah. the New York Knicks yeah. are the new dog in town. The Philadelphia 76ers are the Cowboys of the NBA. Oh! oh. Listen, hey, listen, they got talent. They're going to be great right up until playoffs roll around. Then they're going to fold their little tents. Oh, wow. See, I love guys that just learned the NBA in the last 12 months. Uh, and he's so right. I'll give it yes, to you right, right now. Right. I love it. I love it. That is a great comparison and brings us back to football. So the guy in the corner is happy over there, too. That's good. Uh, talking football. Coming up, we got more football with the Cowboys extend out. Oh, oh, They've really got no choice. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's the Sixers of the NFL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The NFL yeah. And we've got we've got a new segment here called On the Mark. On the Mark. Oh, yeah. That's right. It All features right. Mark Schlereth, uh, obviously. And it's right after this. Uh, before we get back to your Super Bowl chatter, we only have Mark here for another 15 minutes this week. And then he goes back to Denver to see his beautiful family uh, and those adorable grandkids of his. So we thought we'd have a little fun okay. with a segment called On the uh, Mark. Oh, yeah. Look at you. Oh, wow. Look at you. Yeah. Well, here we go. Easy questions. You guys answer them. Okay. I'll see you get some of those points uh, at the end of it. You guys ready to go? Let's do it. Scored. All right. Okay. Um, Mark should win this, by the way, just so you know. Because it's so named after geared him? towards him. Yeah. Uh, what lovemaking position did Schlereth want his number to represent? <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, God. What? Yeah. Wait a minute. You just gave away the answer, yeah. you knuckleheads. Okay. Let's All right, that was, the next one. that was a freebie. Yeah. That was a freebie. So, everybody, <laughs> wins. You that, that, everybody wins. <laughs> you don't want me to answer the question? <laughs> that was a freebie. We gave that one away. And now the real contest begins okay. now. Right now. I was going to go right now. Now. Yeah. All right. What are all sprinters on before they get set? Oh, oh got it. Okay. okay. What are all sprinters on before they get set? Let me start with Willie Colon. Go ahead. Blocks. Blocks. What did you say? Blocks. Yeah. What did you say? The mark. Yeah. yeah. Got on it. your mark. Yes. Oh. Get set. Great football players. Go. Great football players. Right. Too. Great See, football right. players. Well, great some football stereotypes players. Stereotypes are true. Really good at football. These <laughs> oh, man. Really good at football. You know what? <laughs> really good at football. 
I'm telling you, you got to sell one. All right, really good one. at football. These yeah. two are really good at football. Again, the name of the game is yes, On the Mark. The mark. <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you a curveball okay. here, though. Okay. I'm going to say the answer is not Mark for this one. I'm gonna 69. Uh, this is just 69. My, this is not 69. Uh, uh, I'm no. just trying to think outside no. the box. That's all. Um, this is just me, morbid curiosity. Uh, uh, who shot a man in Reno just to watch him die? Oh, oh, yeah, who shot a man in Reno just to watch him die? This is just my own little curiosity. Um, I know this Come because on. it's Don't referenced it in a Don't Beastie Boys song. Okay, fair oh, yes. enough. Yes. And five, four, three, uh, two. Go ahead, Jacobs. Uh, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Cash. Shot a man in Reno Mr. just to watch him die. Uh, the also, blocks. The blocks. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Willie really drew a picture of nighttime. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so Johnny Cash is the correct answer. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Now, I'm uh, winning. Right. I'm winning. Here we go. This is a true or false question. Oh, okay. True or false, Mark Schlereth once made a young Kyle Shanahan babysit his kids and didn't pay him. Oh. Oh. oh that's. Um... Now, Kyle, of course, was on the sideline for a lot of your games yeah. with uh, his dad, Mike Shanahan, of course. And mm -hmm. did uh, Mark Schlereth once make Kyle babysit his kids and not pay him? True or false, Mr. Jacoby? True. True. Uh, Mr. Willie Cologne. Really Cologne. weird one to make up. What is that? Tebow? What is that? Tebow. What is that? Wait, the board is wet. The board is wet. Board's wet. All right, true. Marky That's Mark. That's false. Never happened. No, never happened. Did he, did he ever babysit your kids and got paid? Uh, no, he no. never babysat never, never, kids. Never, oh, okay. never so babysat. He was, you don't he trust was, Kyle Shanahan. He was the last cord holder in a Super Bowl. Remember how they used to hold yeah, the, the yeah. head coach's cord? Yes, from after, his headset. Yeah, after Super Bowl, I think, 33, they went cordless. So he's the last guy ever to hold a cord in the Super Bowl, Kyle Shanahan. How about that? Oh, how about oh, that? Oh, oh, have you ever day? held a cord? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not your own. I mean, no. someone else's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Cut the cord. Yeah. Cut the cord. Yeah. Cut the cord. Yeah. That's a great little tidbit we didn't yeah. need to know. I uh, appreciate it. Only one quarterback with the name Mark has ever won a Super Bowl. Who uh -huh. is it? Only one quarterback with the name Mark has ever won a Super Bowl. What is his I name? Know that. You should know that. Yeah. You got it. You're on. You're on. You're on yeah. it. You're on it. Is you it true it. or false? No. no. It's true. <laughs> Only one quarterback named Mark has ever won the Super Bowl. What quarterback, Mark, what, won it? And uh, what do you got, Wills? Mark Rippin. Mark Rippin. Yeah, yeah. Rip. Mark Rippin. Mark Key Mark. Mark Key Mark. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. no, that no. Is... But that takes away what was going to be the next question. Mark Rippin oh. is correct. Yeah. Only oh, okay. guy named Mark. That's crazy. Tax you in a Super Bowl. Crazy. And here's the final one for you. It's not who's the lead singer of the Funky Bunch. Oh. Uh, we just got that answer. That's Marky Mark. Yeah. Here's the final one. Dan Marino used to throw touchdown passes to a couple of Marks. What are their last names? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Dan Marino used to throw touchdown passes to a couple of Marks. What's their last name? No I cheating know. like at Hofstra. I got one. I got one. All right. You're, and uh, you have Duper. Duper. That is one correct answer. 50%. Mark Super Duper. And who is the I other Mark? One. I only know one. I know it's two. Mark Clayton. Duper and Clayton. Oh. Collectively, you guys yeah. got it right. Nice job on that. And yeah, that's a little you. addition of On the Mark. Who's the only quarterback to beat Tom Brady in Foxborough in a playoff game? Mark Brunel. Mark, Mark Brunel. Sanchez. Oh. Uh, we can go oh. on, 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 on. All right. From that, we go to first in football. And here is Mr. Ajikobi. We start with the starting quarterback of the Super Bowl bound what? Chiefs. What? Now, he, this picture was from inside the NFL. It was a still shot. And if you take out the bottom third, what? you'll see oh. that he, oh, body like all on the rest show. of us, has a dad bod. And he said, yo, why do you have to do that to me like that? Now, to be fair, if you watch the full video, he looks like he is in pretty good shape. But right I mean, there, not the best. But again, I told you guys a story a few months ago, and you guys all poo-pooed me. 
And the story was that I was stranded in the Island Mermaid, a bar on Fire Island with Frank Reich. Yes. And we had a conversation about quarterbacks. And oh. Frank Reich told me at the Island Mermaid that when it comes to young quarterbacks that he is kind of handicapping as to whether or not they'll make good pros, he doesn't look at their arm strength. He looks at their ass, their legs, and their core. And he wants big, thick kids who have strength in their ass, their legs, and their core. That's what Patrick Mahomes has. So, yeah, the other part of this is, as a guy who's not an athlete, a NARP, if you might say, non-athletic regular person. You, you had a see, turkey bowling last seeing, week. Yes, I did, in the ninth and tenth frame, by the way. Seeing the best quarterback in football look like me physically – is one of the great things I've ever seen yeah. in my lifetime because now I can say, honey, I've got the body of the best quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. got – Look at that. Look at that. That's – that's – that's – Oh, yeah, there you oh. go. That's – that's basically, and we, that's basically. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you're the, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at Ratings that. are going me, up. Mahomes. Dude, yeah. Mahomes, did, me. You, you guys did you, are. Uh, did you have an asset to me? <laughs> no. Did they remove it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah both of you guys are built yeah. like hot pockets. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Congratulations on your first time next to me. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> big eating day for you yesterday. It was a birthday. It was a big eating day yeah, for me yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I go. killed a couple octopuses. There's no doubt about that. Oh, oh look at that. Oh. Look at that. Yeah. By the way. The side right. is always. Yeah. I, I'm old enough to be his father. Correct. So let's not forget that either, okay? Great, great, great. Thank you. You look great, Craig. Thank you for that. You might, great. Yeah, you might yeah. be in That's shape. because I have Newton running sneakers, and I put a 1,000 miles on those bad boys, oh, yeah. and the, yeah, the yeah, weight's just falling off. Are those really. big Newton tight. running sneakers? What happened? Fig no, Newton no, no, running sneakers? I love no, Fig no, Newton. No, what else you got? Moving on. Let's talk about uh, Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones is uh, he's down in Mobile, Alabama for the Senior Bowl, and people put a microphone in front of him, and he said some crazy stuff, which he always does. This time he's talking about his starting quarterback, Dak Prescott, and his performance last year. Looking forward to next year. Dak has room for improvement, and not just the scheme around him, but Dak, uh, Dak can improve. That's a big plus when you've been playing the game seven years and you've, uh, by assessment, uh, have some uh, room to get better in. He did this year. I expect him to do it next year and the next year. You never know if Jerry Jones is paying you a compliment or not. Because he was like, oh, he's been in the league seven years. Look, he's still improving. This is so amazing. Yeah. But he still needs to improve next year. Do you think that they will sign him long term this offseason? Yeah, I think they have to. And there's a couple things. As much you know, crap as everyone gives Dak Prescott for not getting over the hump in the playoffs, the reality is that he's a top ten quarterback in the NFL. And there are two-thirds of the league that would trade their quarterback for Dak Prescott. They wouldn't even think twice about it because he's at an upper echelon at that position, the hardest position in all sports. So – he counts $59 million against the cap right now. It's just smart business. You keep a top 10 quarterback around as long as you can, A, and B, you restructure that contract to give you more wiggle room to bring in other free agents, to sign all your draft picks, all that kind of stuff that we talk about you know, more in April than we do now. But it is a no-brainer. Dak Prescott, whether we want to kill him or not for postseason performances, and he deserves that criticism. He knows Because by his own admission, he stunk in that game against Green Bay, as the entire team did. But he has to take the onus because he's the quarterback. The Cowboys have no choice. You're talking about a 30-year-old guy in his prime who came off a great regular season, who's a top-10 quarterback. And when you play these things out, for those of you that hate Dak Prescott and want to get rid of him if you're a diehard Cowboy fan and you just don't like him, you can't just throw that into the wind unless you've got the answer exactly. as to who do you get instead. Right. Now, if there's an answer for that, I'm all ears. But I can tell you as a fact, there is not a quarterback available right now that is better than Dak Prescott. And that's it. And you, don't it. Have, and you don't have a quarterback that's a playmaker like this. This clip right here, Week 17 against the Detroit Lions, back against his own end zone, evades the rush from Derek Barnes and drops a dime to CeeDee Lamb yeah. for a touchdown. Ooh. Like, you have a playmaker at the quarterback position for the Dallas Cowboys. You don't just sneeze that off. You don't just kind of, you know, just brush that off. He's a difference maker. Now, yeah, you can always judge, uh, judge him over his postseason lack of success, but when you got him making plays like that at that position. Here's the issue. Here's the issue. I don't know. This is way ahead of the game. The Cowboys. 
Cowboys next year have nine home games, eight games on the road, right? Uh, their schedule, we know who they play. We just don't know, obviously, when they play them. But outside of the NFC East, you know, their schedule's not easy like it was this past year where it's a bunch of tomato cans. They've got the Baltimore Ravens yeah. this year. They've got the Cincinnati Bengals. They've got the Houston Texans. Yeah, they've got the Saints. They have the Falcons, which those on paper should be winnable games. And they have the Detroit Lions. They are not going to go through 17 weeks and play zero teams with a winning record like they did this past year until the very end when they played the yeah. Detroit Lions. They're, their schedule gets harder. Right. Their schedule gets harder, but the bottom line is they are a really talented team. Yep. And you're 100% true. I'm 100% correct that Dak Prescott is a top 10 quarterback. Yep. So yeah. you have one. I mean, it's not like you find them. It's not like you can find them. <laughs> I mean, everybody thought they were found them in the draft in the 2018 class. Right. 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 The How'd guy, that work out? Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. We're, it's they're going to sit him down there and say, Dak, let's talk about your contract. You want to keep CeeDee Lambs, your number one receiver? Let's do that. Do you want to strengthen the running game? Let's do that. Do you want to get a second receiver? Let's do that. We're going to have to restructure your contract because we can't do that with $59 million. Well, he wants it restructured because, sure. yeah, yeah. you know, he's sure going to get an extra sure you can. 180 you're, million bucks. Right. Yeah. Sure. Like, you, if you're, you're Dak Prescott, money. if you I'm Dak Prescott, I don't want to play without a restructured contract. So when they come and ask me, you know, I'm already waiting for that phone call because I want them to because I'm going to get myself another couple hundred million dollars right. and yeah. probably 40 or 50 right up front, one stroke of a check. We got to take a quick break, which means, unfortunately, party is such sweet sorrow. What? Oh. We have to say goodbye. Oh. You're leaving the man they yes, call I Stink, I Mr. Am. Mark yes, Schlereth. <laughs> Always great having you here. Likewise. Appreciate you being here. Open door, anytime you want to come. Unless, of Mark course, Flares, everybody. to be fair, though, unless I see you on another show on the network, then you're dead. To <laughs> yeah, okay. Outside that of that, open that door. Love you. Get home safely. All right. Best thank you, brother. Thank you. That's Mark Schlereth, everybody. Coming up. Come on. We make well, you read picture Andy Reid. Wow. Oh. Good. They turned on you quick, Carl. They turned on you. Time now for the segment we call a Wee or a Wote. Patrick Mahomes will finish his career as a Kansas City Chief. Will he or won't he? He will. Yeah, there's going to be a statue outside of Arrowhead with his face on it. Babies are being named after him. He's not going anywhere. He's going to be a Chief for life. I think that's, that goes without saying. There is a more precedent in the history and annals of the NFL that you don't finish your career Correct. with one team than you do finish your career with one team, as you can see there. Yeah. These are some of the great quarterbacks yeah. to have ever played, and none of them finished their career with the team that they became famous and uh, won Super Bowls with. Yeah, Mahomes will be the difference. Uh, I believe so. I think you talk about what he does well. He's, he's an ambassador of the uh, city, so I think he's, he's going to be. Well, I'm going to say he's going to play for another team because I think you're going to see Andy Reid retire at some point. Some point? That's going to be fractured, and then he'll uh, go somewhere else. There was some talk that Andy Reid retires after this year's Super Bowl. Not That's buying a storyline. Not buying it. I can see him yeah. retire. Not buying it. And the second part of that storyline that I may have created was that Bill Belichick gets the job. You did say and that. And then breaks Don Shula's record and wins nine more Super Bowls with Patrick Mahomes into his 40s as the starting quarterback. Yeah. Of the Kansas City Chiefs, you say no to that. No. I was about to number two. All right, Super Bowl 58. Brock Purdy okay. will outplay Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. Will, will he, he or won't, won't he? he? He won't. Ah, yeah, come on. You, I know you love the machine, but Patrick Mahomes this time of year, he knows what to do with the football. And he's been efficient. These last two games, what you see him do is will his team to victory. Now I understand second half of that Baltimore game, they weren't great. They punted five times. But how he started, I mean, he was, he was the first half he played immaculate football. So I think Brock Purdy, the way he started his last two games, not good. He's pretty much had to be more instinctive than systematic. So I give the edge to uh, Patrick Mahomes. No chance. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. chance. Absolutely not. Well, if you look at what Brock Purdy did, the last two playoff games that he had an opportunity to play yeah, well, right? he did not play well. Uh, they did score 34 points in one of those games. Let's not forget that. And now that we learned earlier this week that the Kansas City offense is now predicated on passes behind the line of scrimmage and really no more than nine yards down the field, all of a sudden Game Brock manager. Purdy outperforming Patrick Mahomes, I think, is absolutely on the table. We said earlier they got smarter. Now, how they got smarter was giving the ball to Isaiah Pacheco. So you can't uh, knock him for that. I'm not knocking him for running the ball. I'm knocking him for just throwing the ball a couple yards to his left. System quarterback. A couple yards to his System, right. Patrick Mahomes, so it's system almost like It's almost like they don't trust him to throw the ball down System the field. System quarterback. Yeah. Not yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Lamar Jackson, MVP of the league in a couple days, will play in a Super Bowl at some point in his career. Will, will he? he? 
or won't he? I, in my heart, I want to say he will. And so I'm going to go with that. I think he's going to, in my heart, I'm, 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 I'm an How emotional your brain? man. How about oh, your brain? Yeah. yeah. You're I a mean, smart guy. You're a uh, uh, well-educated man. Yes. Will it, we, using your brain, not your heart. We ever going to see Lamar Jackson in the Super Bowl? I'm going to say we will. Craig, right? You talk about this defense valley, they may not have a, uh, I almost said McQueen. They may, they're not going to have, <laughs> they're not going to have uh, Patrick Queen. But overall, man, this team is coming back. Yeah. And been there, Zay Flowers is going to be better. You know, talking about Mac, Mark Andrews is supposed to be healthy. You know what you have in Likely now. The office will evolve. So I, I think uh, If I may, before Jacoby says Willie or won't he, if I may, yeah. don't forget a young man named Joe Burrow is coming Correct. back. Correct. Joe Burrow is coming back. Deshaun Watson, I think, was 6-1 with yes. the Browns when he uh, got knocked out for the rest of the year. He's coming back. Let's not forget that. Well, it, let's not forget that Zay Flowers was a couple millimeters away from scoring that football. And yes. they were very close to getting the Super Bowl this year. So there's nothing that I saw this year that makes me feel like it's not going to happen in the future. Talk about two-time MVP. He's going yeah, to have He's going to get there. He's By the way, a lot of guys have won MVPs. Not a lot of guys have won Super Bowls. Fact. And while he is a great quarterback and the MVP, it's never going to be as "quote unquote" easy That's or as streamlined as it was this year. This was the year. This, this was, was the, the year to get there. All the stars were aligned, and you didn't get it done. Yeah. It's going to be harder next year, not easier. But we'll see how it plays yeah. about. Obviously, they're a perennial playoff team, so they'll be in the conversation. Here's one for you: Bill Belichick will coach again. Will he? Yeah. Or won't he? I said he will. And I think if things don't go right here in New York for Brian Dayball, he may come back and be the head coach. Oh, oh, oh. oh. We know the history. You know, he's been a consultant. You know, he loves New York. You know, everything. He, you know, his foundation is here, and it's going to be with the New York so Giants. So let me put this out there and just ask the question to you guys, right? If you're the New York Giants and Brian Dable had the first great year's rookie year's yeah. coach and this year wasn't as good and part of that could be, you know, Daniel Jones, part of it could be a lot of things, right? And you're very close to Bill Belichick and he has been a consultant to the Mavericks right. and the New York Giants, even while at New England, why not go get him now? Go get him now. Well, I think, I think right? that Bill Belichick not getting a job this offseason is actually the best thing that happened to Bill Belichick. Because imagine he goes to the Falcons, right? They have no quarterback. They might win the division. They're not going to win a Super Bowl. They're not going to get to the divisional round. But now he sits there. He's just a little carrot dangling out there. For every owner, every team that starts one and three, every team that goes one and four that has higher expectations, there's a Bill Belichick out there. Yes. And I feel like you make a, send a couple texts. Make a couple phone calls, and next thing you know, you could see a coach like Brian Dable, who's suspected, who has one in the past, might be out because you have Belichick to come. In. I think if you have a guy that you know is great, who has a connection to the organization, versus a guy that maybe will become great, you go get great because you got it. Uh, I think Brian Dable's on the hot seat to start this year, 100%. as much because you know the train wreck that last year was, and the infighting that we're now learning about yep. on the sideline and losing coaches, and Bill Belichick's just out there. I will not be shocked if Belichick doesn't coach this year. It looks like he won't. Right. I will not be shocked if Bill Belichick weasels his way in to the New York Giants job. And let's not forget, we had Sterling Shepard up Snake there, and the he talked about you know, potentially not playing next year. It wasn't because he was not healthy enough, because he was tired of losing. He, he was drafted when Ben McAdoo was here, and they've done nothing since. So yeah. if you get Bill Belichick, you bring some more hope into that. Movie. I bumped into Sterling Shepard a couple days ago at a golf simulator event with Saquon Barkley. Uh, I just want to put this out on the record. Neither one of them really could have called. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I just want to put this on the record. Yeah, I just want to put right. it out there. going to come up later. Great guys. Love Sterling. He'll be yeah. back on the show at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't, I'd never met Saquon before. I told him uh, we played some indoor golf. Uh, and I can tell you this. I got both. So are you saying you're the best golfer out of the three? A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Right. It was, frankly, a little embarrassing. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next one for you. Aaron Rodgers. Will lead the Jets to the playoffs next season. Will he or won't he? Yeah, he doesn't even have a choice. He will. Right. Like, <laughs> like, he must. Yes. Like, they, they will, they're going to run him out of the city if he doesn't bring the Jets a playoff berth. So, yeah, I just not even. It's it's insane. I think the he, Jets are winning the Super Bowl next year, but that's yeah, that's just me. I'm just that's just me. What? I just want to be the first guy to say it, so you guys can rack the tape and hang on to it for me until next year, so we can say, oh, February 1st, Carton was the first guy to say the Jets are yes. going to the Super Bowl. There's, not a, single, there's not a single person on the staff that wrote that down. 
There's not a single person on the staff that was like, oh, we gotta, we gotta receipt? remember this at 9:07 yeah. on February 1st. He said they're gonna win the Super Bowl. They're not making the playoffs next yeah. year. Don't you know have what? a guy. Aaron Rodgers makes it to like week three. He gets hurt again, and it's the same thing all over again. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's just the same. Old oh, Jets. No oh, chance, no chance they one. make the playoffs. It's just the same. Old oh, Jets. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> February 1st. All right, here we go. 907. And Andy Reid will finish his career with more wins than Bill Belichick. He's a good 30 some odd wins away. Will he or won't he? I would say he won't. I think he retires. I think he retires after. You get a chance to win the Super Bowl. You, you've done everything you've needed to do within your career. You, you know about your off the field issues right now. Um, go out on top. So I, I can see him retiring. He's, uh, he's 50 total wins behind yep. uh, Bill Belichick. Obviously, Shula's number one overall. Uh, he would have to coach another four, four years, years. Uh, to up. break it. Uh, I know there are some stories out there that maybe he calls it quits at some point here. But to me, you got Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback. Where are you going? You don't have to do anything anymore. Yeah, you just show up and roll the ball out there, there it, and say, is, go be you. He is too successful, having too much fun, winning too many football games for him to retire at this point. I do not believe any of these rumors. I think Andy Reid coaches next year, and I think he eventually surpasses Belichick, no matter okay. where Belichick goes. And I'll give you one last one, uh, just for S's and giggles uh, going into break. It's an NBA one. LeBron James will force his way out of L.A. Will he or won't no, he? No, he won't. Bron is at USC. His production company is in L.A. He's doing everything he wants to do as a professional athlete right there in L.A. He hangs it up as a Laker. February 1st, 9.09. He's not going to be in the Lakers next year. Oh. He is oh. not going to be in the Lakers next year. What, LeBron James only has a few seasons left in the league, and yeah. he does not want to be the 10 seed in the playing game. Yeah. That's exactly well, what Well, maybe he should play better. Is. Uh, I'll just bring it out there. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a talking point. That yeah. helps. Yeah. Yeah. Play better, win. All right, quick break. Uh, Travis Kelsey talked about their ability to flip the switch uh, come December. You buy into that? Do you think this Kansas City Chief team is now different than the one we saw for the better part of 18 weeks, or are you not buying it right after this? Good morning! Yeah! Welcome back to the Curtain Show. We have your early morning headlines, and we start with this. Travis Kelsey on the New Heights Podcast, brought to you by Wave Sports Entertainment. He spoke about the way the Chiefs have flipped the proverbial switch between the regular season and the playoffs. Here is Mr. Swift. I think there's just that 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 flip of the switch that you you kind of turn on in December. Yeah, sense of urgency. You know, you want to try and have that switch for the entire year, but it's a 17 game season, man. Sometimes it's just, I mean, it's hard, man. It's hard, especially after 11 years getting excited for a random game in in November where you know you're about to wax this f-ing team. It's hard <laughs> to get it going every single week, and um, yeah. this year it was it was it was harder than ever. Craig, are you buying the fact that this Chiefs team we're watching the playoffs is a completely different team than the one we saw in the regular no, season? No, because I don't think they are. I think uh, we're, we're celebrating them like it's the Chiefs of a couple years ago, and I just don't think they are. You know, they know how to win. I'll give them that for sure. I don't think he's speaking for himself there where, yeah. hey, if you want to know why I only had three catches in a game uh, before Thanksgiving, because I don't really give a damn. Uh, and I know I'm going to the playoffs, and then I'll start playing better. And God knows we saw it last week, you know, with 11 targets and 11 catches. But I still look at this Chiefs team, and of all the Chiefs teams that have made the run, this is the worst one. You can say they have the better defense. It's the worst overall team of all the Chiefs teams that have gone there. Now, they're still good enough to win, and uh, you know they're going to give San Francisco everything they want in this game because they have Mahomes and Kelsey turned it on, obviously, uh, this past week. But they don't dominate anyone, and they don't blow anybody out. And I think because of that, you're going up against a team that we've seen a little Jekyll and Hyde out of the last couple of weeks. And San Francisco is a big question mark. If San Francisco plays the way they played defensively against Detroit and Green Bay, Kansas City is your Super Bowl champion. Sure, and, they, and that's it. It's a wrap. Yeah. Period. Yep. Stop. Yep. If somehow San Francisco starts playing up to their capability defensively, then I think you get a great game. Could go either way. You know, this is essentially a pick'em game, and it should be. You were talking about a better team talent-wise mm-hmm. on paper, San Francisco, a team that knows how to win, which is an intangible in Kansas City. I think Kelsey's speaking for himself. I don't think he's speaking for Andy Reid or Patrick Mahomes or anybody else. Yeah, I, I think you're 100% right. And I also think, you know, for we, we look at Patrick Mahomes and guys like Travis Kelsey as heroes, right? And then we see the humanistic side of him saying, like, hey, man, sometimes 11 years – 
being that guy, always being dependent on, we have bad days, and it's normal, right? But I think the switch for them being turned on is Isaiah Pacheco. When you when they started handing him the ball and really running the offense through him, allowing the play-action game, kind of simplifying things and getting back to the grassroots of football, they started to emerge as a better outfit. So I think right now they just they they become simplistic. They understand who they are, and it comes down to the run game. When Isaiah Pacheco is the lead guy for them, they're just a better team. Yeah, but to me, I think we're going to get exactly what we expect out of Kansas City. I think I think they're predictable in a good way. Yeah. Like you know what they are, and you know who you have to stop, and just nobody can stop them, right? San Francisco is the bigger question mark because we saw Brock Purdy struggle against Green Bay for three yeah. quarters. We saw him struggle in the first half. Of course, against Detroit, we saw that vaunted, you know, uh, San Francisco defense. You know, where's Chase Young? Yeah. Does he play football anymore? You know, how come they haven't dominated with their front four? So I think San Francisco comes in more talented on paper, but a bigger question mark as to what we're going to get. If that defense plays the way they played, and Brock Purdy is struggling for the first 30 minutes of football, Kansas City is going to score three touchdowns. No question. You know, that being said. I think the expectation should be that San Francisco plays a lot better than they played in the last but two the, games. But the question is, why have the last two weeks they started out so bad? Great question. Because like, what we were told, especially having the, the, the bye week for them, that they were prepared. Brock yeah. was prepared. Everything was ready Not to go. Not just that. They struggled. I'm going to say this with, you know, with all due respect. Yeah, yeah. Right? With all due respect. This top five San Francisco defense looked terrible against Jordan Love and against Jared Goff. Yeah. Now, say what you want about the seasons they had. I don't want to take anything away from them. They played really good football. For week 12 on, you know, Jordan Love was a rock star, and Jared Goff's been great. But San Francisco's supposed to have a Ravens-esque defense. Correct. And they let Jordan Love wow. with a no-name wide receiving core and Jared Goff with one main guy in Amos St. Brown dominate them for a half plus. If they do that against that guy, meaning uh, Patrick Mahomes, they're in trouble. And the so, Chiefs, yeah, I was going to say the Chiefs have an office line to do that. That's what I was going to say. One thing that the Chiefs have done, and what is Andy Reid always good at? wins after a bye week. Yes, so you've got a bye he's week. the best ever. What else is Andy Reid always good at, specifically in the AFC Championship game? That first drive, those yeah. 15 scripted plays that he has, that seven-minute drive, yeah. it got in Baltimore's head. It made them get out of what they do. They weren't running the ball. And I expect the same thing to happen. So when you talk about the switch being flipped, yeah. that's one thing. I just think that it, I think that you hit the nail on the head. I think that he's saying his revisionist history about himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. About I himself. wasn't good through the regular season. I happened to be good the last couple of games. But yeah. I expect the Andy Reid script and the start of the game in that first drive to really dictate what happens. In so the here's game. an interesting question for you. Uh, we'll play from both sides. Start with San Francisco. If you win the toss, do you put the Kansas City offense on the field? No. Because of what you just said, Kansas City, better than any other team, scoring a touchdown on the opening drive. Yeah. That's what they do. Right. So do you put your over. defense on the field so you get the second half possession to start and tell your defense, if you stop them on the first drive, we can win the game right then and there? No. No. So no. you don't. So Give me the ball. if you're San Fran and you in the toss, you're putting your offense Most on the field. Most people always defer, and I totally understand yeah. that. But because of what I just said, because of the scripted plays, because they always start hot, because of Andy Reid, because of the bye week, because of all those reasons, Patrick Mahomes, I want the ball first. The reason I throw my defense out there first, because I feel like through the last two games, that's the team that needed to spark, right? Okay. They have to come out high. I think when you're a defense in a big time game, you have to set the tone. Okay. And this is when you lean on Bosa, Fred Warner, and those so guys. So now flip the script. If you're Kansas City and you win the toss, what do you what def, what what do you put out there first? I put them up, give them the ball. So what happened with the Ravens? The Ravens yeah. with three and out. No, I'm, right. going, I'm going my defense. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you. You're putting your defense on the field. It's an interesting there. choice yeah. because of what's happened the last couple of weeks. The only thing I'll say about San Francisco is that maybe they learned something about themselves where if they do go down early, they're not gonna panic because Man, we were down early against yeah. – down 17 right. against Detroit. We were down, obviously, against Green Bay. We know we can come back. So maybe those two games help them. If Kansas City comes out of the gate, scores that quick touchdown, has the long drive, there's no it, panic. It can't go worse than it did in the NFC Championship. I agree. It yeah, cannot but, go worse. But at the same time, like, Andy Reid's not going to make the bonehead decisions that Dan Campbell did. Also true. Like, that's not, just not going to happen. There's something that needs to be taken into account. Now, I know you guys don't pay that much attention to these sort of things, but there's an X factor in the Super Bowl that no one is talking about. Oh, oh what are we doing right now? Oh. The moon. The moon. Oh. It is a waxing crescent moon. Oh, no. And in a waxing crescent moon, out of 20 times the Chiefs have played, 
in the Mahomes era, yeah. they're 19 and one. Wow. Why even play the game? Oh. That's, uh, Look at that. You see that waxing crescent? You see that curve? You see that? That's waxing crescent moon. The yeah. Chiefs are 19 and one. Here's, look, I respect it. I think we have something. I don't think you respect it, Craig. I think we had something. Wasn't it last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lions had a gibbous moon. Wasn't there like a waxing gibbous? Waxing gibbous yeah. moon. Yeah, that was a big thing. He right? was all the in the sky. Yeah, but we last this year, room? was there a game last year? It the was. Waxing gibbous? It was this year. The oh, Detroit Lions had a good record with the waxing gibbous moon, and they won. And they and want now it's a waxing crescent okay, moon, now, and the Chiefs always win. I appreciate the record and the I waxing. I don't think you do. I don't think uh, you do. Wax on, wax on, whatever it is. But here's my question, and I know you don't know the answer. I, I apologize for putting you on the spot. No, I know it's the answer. It's more of our research. <laughs> I know I know the answer. All right. What's San Francisco's record with a waxing crescent moon? Uh, five and ten. <laughs> <laughs> five and ten. Five oh, and ten. Is that right? Five well, in that ten. case, I like Kansas City. Five and ten. Why do <laughs> you play the game? Why? <laughs> waxing yeah. crescent moon. Yeah. How long is this moon crescent for? Like, how long does that last? 15 days. 15 days. Oh, it's a, a full month. 50 Half days? Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, there you go. So, we are canceling this year's Super Bowl. It's over. And yeah. we're just going to give the trophy to, to Kansas City. Congratulations. Yes. Nice yes. job. Congrats. Uh, no parade. Don't get a parade. No. But you get the Lombardi Trophy, and uh, what's next? The draft? Come no, on, come on. We're moving on to the next go. headline, and it involves your New York Jets, Willie and Craig. There uh, was an article written by The Athletic that just detailed all the dysfunction uh, that was happening behind the scenes out there in New Jersey. Just a couple lowlights from the article. Stupid. Ah, the one Jets coach stupid. said it was a mess. Another AFC GM said that Rodgers is running the show. And Nathaniel Hackett said the plays are whatever Aaron wants. I'm going to tell you what pissed me off that came out. There was, tell us, there, Willie. There was, there was another uh, piece of that that he said uh, Robert Sala was going around the locker room, but potentially wanted to take the guy's phones because of uh, the assistant league. coach's phone. Yeah. So, yes. Real quick. When the story came out that Zach Wilson was like, I don't want to play for you anymore, Uh, he thought a coach leaked that, and he threatened his – allegedly threatened the assistant coaches, I'm confiscating all your cell phones. I want to see which one of you guys is the rat. Yeah, and I I have a problem with that because when I was with Rex Ryan and the Jets – you know, there was a supposed leak. There was a rat in the locker room. And that turned that locker room upside down because we, as players, started looking to see who the rat was. Right. right. Instead of focusing on the game, potentially trying to win a game week after week, we now had – we were questioning our own brother in arms. And that's toxic, man. You know what I mean? So the fact that if this was a thing or not the thing is irrelevant. The fact that it's the Jets, once again, have to question their own is a big sign of dysfunction. You should never have to question people you go to Craig, I have a question for you, right? Because I think if you go to any team that won six or less – they're going to have similar stories in the locker room. Do you think this is Jets specific or is this just what happens when you lose? This is New York specific where, you know, people talk about New York teams just differently than other teams. You know, the, the media in Carolina are not conspiring together no. to write a story <laughs> yeah. in the athletic about how bad the Panthers situation is, right? This is very unique to Northeast teams and major market big city teams. Uh, and the Jets are easy to make fun of, yeah. right? You know, they, they're just an easy team, an easy mark. Uh, to pick on. I don't believe everything in the article. Uh, when you, I know Robert Sala very, very well, and I know that he has talked to people, myself included, about how hard it is to win when you lose, you lose your starting quarterback. So I believe that part of it because I've had those conversations with him. You know, when you lose Aaron Rodgers and your GM didn't get you a qualified backup, and now you're asked to go in big games against really good teams, you're playing shorthanded. Yeah. Right? Nathaniel Hackett was brought in not to be the coordinator for Zach Wilson, but to be the coordinator for Aaron Rodgers. Now, you also have to, to be fair, and I will be critical of Robert for this and Nathaniel Hackett for this, when life throws you lemons, you better figure out how to make lemonade out of it. You can't just sit back and cry about it and go, well, life's not fair. I lost my starting quarterback. The Cleveland Browns lost three quarterbacks, and while they lost the playoff game, they made it to the playoffs, right? For a minute, Josh Jobs was the hottest guy in the NFL. And while Minnesota didn't make the playoffs, it looked pretty good for a couple of weeks. The Jets didn't do that. That's the general manager's fault. I think you want better. Gardner Mitch is going to the Pro Bowl. The Colts right. were actually a reliable team. And they season. went away from going to the exactly. playoffs. So. The Jets just accepted the fact that this is the guy we got to go to war yeah. with, and we know it's not very good. Now, I think they all should come back. Because if Aaron Rodgers is going to be my quarterback, and he is, right? Uh, That's a done deal. He's my starting quarterback next year. What is the point now of bringing in an entire new system, a whole new coaching staff? Because the reality is this. 
Make all the fun you want of the Jets. We deserve it in the moment. But if Aaron Rodgers is healthy last year, the New York Jets are a playoff team. Fact, and fact. nobody can argue that. Fact. Now, yeah. they may not be in the Super Bowl, but they're playing in mid-January. Right? It's a playoff defense. Yes. So from that standpoint, all the other slings and arrows you want to throw, even if I accept all of them, and I slurp them all up. You do the uh, yeah. Okay. I'll take I'll take it all. I take all of it. The reality is this. The New York Jets, if healthy, are a lock to be in the playoffs next year. So why would I make wholesale changes when I got a playoff team in my building? I think that's fair to say. Moving on to our final headline that involves the I Dallas. I can't stop you at one oh, thing. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, go back. Take headlines off. Here's the other thing. I don't know. Take that crap off. I, oh, it's, yeah, just fine. <laughs> I don't know if... If Robert Sala did that or not, you know, the notion of, you know, threatening to take his sounds assistant odd. coach's cell phones, I'd be surprised if he did. It doesn't seem like he would do something. It, it, sounds wouldn't, odd. it wouldn't shock me if it went like this. Man, don't make me start checking cell phones for a rat around here. And one of those guys that's pissed off or has a connection to reporters like, can you believe he threatened to take our cell phones? I don't believe for a minute that Robert Sala told his entire coaching staff because he picked every one of them. Didn't happen. They're all his guys. Did not happen. And not said nonsense. to a grown man, watch how this goes. We're in a role play here. Let's do it. Give me your cell phone. No. Sure. Right? Yeah, let me check who you've been texting. You're like, oh, you said yes. Yeah. No, I'm, Tom, I'm, Tom, I'm Tom Brady with the phone. You I'm Tom no, Brady. You, I don't know what you're talking about. You got nothing to hide. Cell phone. Right. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, are yeah. you a rat? Show me your cell phone. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm a grown man. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, wait, oh, wait. It's yeah. my passcode. Here it goes. Yeah, sir. yeah. Although, yeah. Will and I do have experience. There are people every now and then that do ask to see it. So, yeah. yes, honey. Yeah. Take a look. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. Yeah. Today's a very big day. Uh, not for me. Not for David Jacoby. Today's a very big day. Because 15 years ago today, do you have any idea what happened? No, sir. No, sir. 15 years ago today, San Antonio. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Willie. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. 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 Willie Colon won his first and only Super Bowl. And here's the thing we're going to say publicly for the first time. We all know something about this game. This, of course, is the James Harrison return. Yes, sir. You know, 98 yep. yards, yep. right? Yes, sir. Here's, 74. Here's what we know. San Antonio Holmes did not get that second toe down. No, he did. Oh. Stop it. Yes, here's he did. What we know. Oh, Why do this, Craig? San Antonio Holmes never got that second foot down. Right that, ball. Nope. Yes, that he did. That should not have been a touchdown. Oh, please. If you look at the still shot I thought we were it, celebrating Willie. Right. Not to be a bad guy. I thought we were celebrating Willie. You were gifted. You had to make the negative. You know, gifted. <laughs> you got the one with Super Bowl. You put a big old ass. There right. we go. Anyhow. Stanley. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. 15 years ago today, I was in the building for it. He won it. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.